What happens when a ram locks horns with a silver knight? Well, we'll find out together. It's a showdown in the Mid-State League tonight as Whitehall Yearling takes on Bishop Reedy. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Honda's Thursday Night Lights, presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus. I'm Randy Reinhardt, alongside the football professor, Jeff Logan. Jeff, this is the penultimate game for both of these teams. What do you think about when you're in week number five? Well, I think, Randy, both of these are proud programs with a great history, and I think the ultimate prize this year is the fact that everybody's going to qualify for the playoffs. So this game... For teams that don't have great records, they want to get the momentum going in the right direction tonight. Let's look at the matchup in this contest tonight. First of all, Whitehall Yearling, the Rams come in at 1-3, and three, coached by Rod Lightfoot in year number six. He's never had a losing season with the Rams. Plenty of talent on this team. And you got to look closely for their star player in the open here because he's only five foot five. He's the quarterback. His name is Teron Biles Walker. Well, Biles Walker is an important player in their offense, obviously running that quarterback spot. They will do a lot of RPOs run pass options, and screen plays. That's a little bit why his passing percentage is so good right now, but they're trying to give him plays where he can capitalize. And they lost to Buckeye Valley last week. The Barons beat him 14-13. to On the other side of the field, it's the Silver Knights of Bishop Brady, 2-2, two and two coached by Joel Cutler. Two losses by a total of only four points for the squad. They've got a talented guy that's going to play on both sides of the football tonight. Watch for him. His name is Darius Parham. Well, Darius is a big-body, dual-threat quarterback, and he's got great numbers, Randy. He's run for four touchdowns. He's thrown for one. He obviously is an important part of what the Silver Knights want to get accomplished tonight. And they fell to the Warriors of Harvest Prep last week, 18-15. Are you ready for some football? Let's rock and roll. Are you ready? What a night we should have here at Fortress Old Bets as tonight Whitehall takes on Reedy. Back with the kickoff in mere moments, this is Honda's Thursday Night Lights presented by Columbus State Community College in one place on the CW Columbus. Welcome back to Fortress Obets. It is time now to meet the third member of our broadcast team. We say good evening and happy birthday to Mike Todd. All right, Randy, thank you so much. It's another beautiful night for high school football. Both of these teams coming off close losses last week, so interested to see how they respond. Also want to give a quick shout-out to Whitehall first responder Lance Short, United States Navy, a United States Navy veteran. Feel better, Lance. Get well soon, my friend. Mike, thank you very much, and again, happy birthday. Reedy won the toss and deferred the Rams will receive on your left. Tonight's kickoff is sponsored by Ohio University. Your path to success is guaranteed. With the honors, Evan O'Connell to start this contest. 5'8", 145, and a junior. He does all the kicking for the Silver Knights on the campaign. Again, Jeff, we mentioned 2-2, two and two, but only four points separate the squad from a perfect season. Yeah, I think that they uh, feel really good about their football team, Randy, and I spoke to Coach before the game, and he's excited about the upside of this team. And we are underway in week number five. A kick is high and not that deep, and it's going to hit at the 13 and dribble out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Waiting to corral that back deep was Keith Hodge, but it went out of bounds along with Teron Biles Walker, and Biles Walker says, I'll just stay here and run the show offensively. Now, we're going to see two different guys, by the way, at quarterback. We should mention that as well, too, because not only will Teron Biles Walker see time, but also Elijah Hughes. And Hughes is a little different because he's about uh, eight or nine inches taller than Biles Walker. He goes about 6'2 and 165. So we'll see which route they opt to take here we when it comes to the start of this contest. Team. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. So they opt for the re-kick. Our referee, by the way, tonight is Rob Bachman. So instead of marking the ball at the 35, they'll offer to kick it one more time from the 35-yard line. Joel Cutler in his second tenure, Jeff, with the Silver Knights. Had two seasons with Reedy before and then went over top Arlington for a number of years and now has come back again. A good mark at Reedy of 26 and 12 combined in his two stops there. And up Arlington, he was 10 games over 500 as well. 231-21 and coached your nephew, I believe, he did. too. Danny Logan, who's now a lacrosse player out at the University of Denver, uh, played football for him. We'll try it to the other side now. And the return is going to start from the 20-yard line. Up to the 24, and that is it on the return that time for Whitehall. It was Tyrese Taylor. And Taylor brings it back about four yards. He'll stay in as a wide out in this contest as well, too. And a good hit made by big number two. That is Aiden Aiello, famous name in Reedy football lore, a guy that also starts on defense as well, too, in the secondary. So it'll be first and ten now for the Rams from the 24-yard line. Just a couple seconds in this contest. Okay. 
And again, we're adjusting some things down the field. Again, the officials do not touch the football, but you use a beanbag. And Jeff, you are allowed to do measurements. We've just been lucky the first four weeks that we haven't seen any. First and 10, they'll mark it officially at the 23-yard line. And back to throw. Does he have the option to? We'll see. Pressure's on Biles Walker, and he's going to go down back around the 12-yard line. And again, it's Mr. Ayala who meets him. Now, this is the biggest concern that Whitehall has, is protecting their young quarterback, Teron Biles Walker, with the great rush of that defensive line. And you can see penetration from the very beginning. Look at Jared Coble coming right off the edge. The 6'2", 190-pound sophomore, just very active in there. So a loss all the way back to the 12-yard line. Now they need 21 yards for the first down. From the gun with two backs in the backfield. And they'll keep it on the ground. And the penetration is there again. Very little room to run that time for Kevin Jackson. He tried to take it to the right side, but Jackson, who had 10 carries for 161 yards, good for two touchdowns coming into this contest. Can't find anywhere to go. It's time for your Spark Columbus Fit City Challenge starting lineups. Get up and get active. You can register now at sparkcolumbus.com. There's the offense. Some decent size up front there for the Rams in Marshall, Smart Hendricks, Weingartner, Fedorov, and Cockrell. The Marshall, interesting story. It's just his first year playing football. On the third down and long. And the quick pop and the pass incomplete. And again, we talked about the fact that we could change things up at quarterback. We saw it that time because... At quarterback, we had Elijah Hughes, and the uh, intended receiver was Biles Walker. A little miscommunication there as you look at the starting defense. And uh, Michael Schaefer is the D coordinator, along with T.J. Burbridge with that 3-4 defense. You mentioned uh, Jared Caboy, strong play up front. And how about Devon Malone? Malone is a guy, too, that goes 6'2", 301 pounds and just a junior. Good linebackers is two. And when you see Matthews and Metz and, and Daniels all experience coming back, Schultz in the secondary. I has already played very well early in this contest. And Darius Parham starts on both sides of the football as a defensive back and also as the quarterback. Jesus Yanez El Cotter and tries to boot it off the ground and it's rolled on and the Silver Knights will cover it for the touchdown. Just like that, it's a score for Reedy, and coming up with the touchdown is Caleb Schaefer. Boy, a mistake in special teams there. Very frustrating for Whitehall to start the game this way, but the Silver Knights were bringing pressure. It looked like the snap was decent, Randy, but you get a little bit of a, of a, a nervous situation back there, and you can see the kicker trying to just get the ball out of the end zone. Watch the pressure here. Little girl, your premium action here. Yeah, and the ball never did get out of the end zone, recovered there, so you treat it just like a punt, and the recovery, the ball was down in the end zone for six. Schaefer, the backup quarterback for the Silver Knights, gets the touchdown. It's 6 nothing. and by the way, that was a Ramos roofing touchdown for a free estimate on your roof. Text or call 614-761-ROOF. Extra point time now for the Silver Knights before they've even touched the ball on offense for Evan O'Connell and company. Five of seven so far for him as they start in that a muddle huddle look that Jeff absolutely loves. <laughs> Chance to make it seven nothing early in this one. And we've got motion up front. Now let's see if there's a little decision here by Joel Cutler to take his offense on the field and go for two. Let's see what Rob Bachman and company let us know if it's encroachment perhaps on the defense. Dead ball. Encroachment on the defense. Half the distance. We play the try. And there's the men in stripes. Rob Bachman, Matt Wilson, your umpire. Line judge is Jeff Gerken. Linesman is Josh Bricker. And the back judge is Mark Barker. So do you go for two here, Jeff, from the one and a half? Absolutely. They put the offense back on the field. And this will be the first play from scrimmage for the Silver Knights, even though they're leading in this football game six to nothing with the... Ball recovery on the failed punt, and now we got another penalty. We could call the slow starting. <laughs> I would say so. And here's the call from Mr. Bachman. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number seven, half the distance. Still trying. So the unsportsmanlike conduct will move the ball. It should move it to the three-quarter yard line, right? Inside the one. Did they move the ball yet? I don't think they have. Well, they'll move the beanbag, right? 
And then yes. the center will have the ability to move the football up to where the new beanbag position will be. Just like we can't say the offense is back on the field because it's the first time they've been on there, and it's not actually a play from scrimmage because it's an extra point. I don't think this changes what you would do, no. Randy, but you're still uh, in the shotgun, which is one of the things that really frustrates me. Why not put the center, quarterback, right up under center, go quarterback sneak right over your big center, but they're going to go ahead and snap it five yards deep. Fitzsimmons in the backfield next to Parham, and Darius will take it off the left side and make it look easy. And just like that, they get the two-point conversion from less than a yard out, and early on, the Rams up 8 nothing in this one. And with that being said, we played about 125. We'll take a break. This is Honda's Thursday Night Lights, presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus. Fans, the final chapter of the CW super hit show Supernatural debuts October the 8th right here on the CW Columbus. Don't miss the final episode of this 15-year journey to a long way home and definitely a fan favorite coming to an end. It is Supernatural coming to an end. The party's at Jeff's house. 8 nothing early in this one as we get ready to kick it off. You got the invite? I did indeed. You did? It was. It came to me supernaturally. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't come through the regular mail or email or anything like that. It may not be the night you got the invite. Really? Though. Maybe I just felt that I got it in my <laughs> little ESP without the end. On the return, running into his own blocker, but then still cavorting up over the 30-yard line is Doran Mixon. So first down for the Rams on the second possession. Now, Reedy says they have the ball, and we've got a flag down on the field as well, too. So we'll sort this all out inside the 32-yard line. It's going to be a sideline warning, I can tell you right now, against Reedy. So with that being said, we'll talk about the Hondas, the keys of the game in just a second. Rob, make it official. Sideline warning. Bishop Reedy, they're first. Thank you. Honda keys of the game for Whitehall. Stamina. This is a team that has not seen their weight room since the beginning of March. So that's a key for them performing in the second half. Under par hum. They want to keep Reese Parham in check throughout this contest. On the other side for Reedy. Night moves. Just do what they do offensively and move the ball methodically down the field and keep Walker stationary. We're talking about Miles Walker, the quarterback. That can also be a wideout as well, too, for the Rams. Speaking of the aforementioned Mr. Miles Walker, he's in there at quarterback now and pressure's on, and he's going down back around the 23-yard line. Hit down on the play by number 24. That's Jawan McGowan, a guy I think is on the present, Jeff. This is a guy that can play pretty much anywhere. In the defensive line, he can play as a fullback and everywhere else. Yeah, just no time at all for Miles Walker to be able to find anybody downfield. And again, Randy diminutive at five foot five playing that quarterback spot one of the things that i think i would do because of this pressure is to roll that young quarterback outside let him have a little bit more vision and time to throw second down and long that pass sales incomplete intended on the play for melvin scott scott on the campaign is a guy that stands 5'7, 125 so you got the quarterback at 135 the wide out at only 125 but, Jeff, I alluded to the fact that the Rams have not seen the weight room since the beginning of March. How difficult is that to run a season, run a football program, and not get a chance to condition that much? Well, I think everybody is in uh, new territory, Randy. This is, uh, uh, you know, uncharted territory for all these football teams, and that's just one of the struggles. Nixon readjusts the bottom, but it'll be a keeper this time up to the 25-yard line, and that's it for... Teron Biles Walker. Short gain on the play. He had 30 carries for 48 yards coming into this contest. They'll set up a second punt attempt in this contest for the Rams in the person of Jesus Yanez Elcotter. Now let's see what uh, Bishop Reedy does. They got a little pressure on the kicker on the first one. They recovered it in the end zone for a touchdown. Let's see if they bring it at him again. Now, usually when they only have one back, which is what they have now to return this punt, that's when Coach Cutler likes to bring pressure. So let's see if the Silver Knights unload again. Snap all important as well, too. Play just about three minutes of this contest. Oh, and they got the left guard to move. A lot of jumping around on the Silver Knight side, and it drew motion on the offense, so they're going to move them back five yards. So the false start will mark the ball back around the 20. Great facility here at Fortress Obitz, where we're some 72 rows up and maybe 200 feet. The joke was this was actually Mile High Stadium in Central Ohio. <laughs> Dead ball. But. Disconcerting act on the defense. Ooh. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth. So the disconcerting act caused right. the false start. So well, We knew that's exactly why he did it. I didn't know there were manners yes. in football. 
disconcerting act. That explains the way you Would played. you help me with that one a little bit? <laughs> when you're talking about face guarding, there's no face guarding in high school football. There is no face but guarding. But there are disconcerting acts to deal with. But keep your elbows off the table and we'll talk, okay? Holy smokes. On oh, the no. snap this time is horrible. It's over his head inside the five and all the way back near the goal line. Can he cover it up? He tries to. Does he have the ball or does Reedy have it? There's a pile of four guys there, it's and they're going to call it a safety. And indeed, Jesus was able to get back on the football, so two more points for Reedy. Makes it 10 to nothing. The first snap was good. That one was just a little high. Yeah, what a nightmarish start for Rod Lightfoot and his football team. I mean, there is no chance to be able to catch this football, and he did the right thing by just covering it in the end zone, take the two points. Parham was after him, trying to share the football at least with him here in the goal line. Darius got there about a half step late and still tried to rustle it out of his midsection. So it's now 10-0 and a free kick to follow from the 20-yard line. So a great start for Reedy, not so great for Whitehall. We mentioned the fact that Whitehall came in at 1-3 and three and Reedy came in at 2-2, two and two, but we mentioned just four points, Jeff, when you look at it for Reedy in... Their season separate them between a perfect season because they lost 7-6 to six to Liberty Union in week number one, and then they fell to Harvest Prep last week, 18-15 to 15 in that contest. When it comes to the weather, trust the weather experts. Marshall McPeak and the ABC6 First Warning weather experts are on your side helping you prepare for the best and worst Mother Nature has to offer. Tonight on ABC6 News at 11. Check it out. Hey Randy, we've got a new viewer tonight. Who's that? Never seen Thursday Night Lights before. Who would that be, Jeff? Our granddaughter, our very first granddaughter, Mia Scarlett, is visiting in Columbus. And Congratulations. I got a picture of her seated on the sofa watching, uh, I don't even know what I'm called. I guess I'm Pappy or something like that. But, uh, all right, well, give me a camera up here. And I just want to say hi to Mia. She's a sweetheart, going to be 10 months old here pretty soon. Congratulations to mom and dad, Critter and Aaron. We love her very much and enjoy the game tonight. Is this the same son that was at a Scioto game without a shirt on and was 28 one. degrees? He's grown up a little bit. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Dad. You're a grandfather. How about that? I had a birthday a couple weeks ago. Mike Todd had one. Steve Bassford's the only one that's not aging up here. Um, well, he didn't go up and down the steps two or three times like we did. That's Let's, true. Steve, go down and get me a, one of those grilled cheeses, would you please? I loved your comment when you came up the third time. I believe you said to me, <laughs> That's an exact quote, by the way. All right, if you're Whitehall, it's tough right now. You're up against it. You've got to kick it off again. You have the option on the free kick. They'll go from the T, and they'll boot it from the 20-yard line. So the return man for the Silver Knights will come up near the 30-yard line. And we'll get a flag for that, I think. A little hesitation start, and then they try it again. Is that a football etiquette issue again? I, 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 okay. That was disconcerting to me. Yeah, we'll call that delay of game, actually. So we'll march you back five, and one of the few times you'll ever see a kickoff from the 15-yard line. So mark it back to the 15, and the return men will cheat up another five yards in for Reedy as well, too. Mention the tough losses for the Silver Knights, and you, know, you take a look at Liberty Union, 4-0 in the campaign. Harvest Prep is 3-1. There's the kick. It's going to come down to Aiello at the 33. Lost his balance, tries to cut back to his right, gets up to about the 46, maybe the 47-yard line. So return of about 13 yards, and the Silver Knights already up by 10. will technically have the ball in offense for the first time. We'll take a look at the offense, courtesy of Spark Columbus. And we mentioned... Mr. Parham at quarterback, but watch Tyrese Hudson. We saw him, Jeff, in the past as a wideout. Now he goes in the backfield. Brian Fitzsimmons makes a great one-two punch for them. And good guys up front in that line. Some good size, too, with the likes of Malone and Melrose and Dimmel, Akers and Roof. Good hands people as well, too, and Matthews and Daniels as well, too. So we'll see what happens for the Silver Knights on their first offensive possession as they send one wide to the top now, the person of Andy Schultz, and now they'll readjust the entire set. Make Cole Matthews almost a wing. The backs from an eye with one wide out to the bottom of the location as well, too. And with all that being said, we have a timeout taken by the Silver Knights. So a lot of moving, a lot of Dallas shifting here on that first down. That was a Bepler Insurance first down, by the way. For a free quote, visit BeplerInsurance.com. We'll take a break. As it's 10-0, Reedy, early in this one. Week number five of Honda's Thursday Night Lights, presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus. 
Well, after the timeout, the Silver Knights have changed their look. No backs in the backfield. They go with three wide to the bottom, one to the top. Actually, now two to the top. Empty backfield. Now they'll readjust and shift back out of that again. As going back on that wing is Cole Matthews. The back's back from an eye and one wide to either side. Showing blitz, and they're coming on the play, and there's nothing there. Great penetration by that defense. The Rams leading the charge, big number 56. Jeremiah Spencer coming, shooting through the nose guard. And here's a defense for the Rams, and Brock Swanger handles that with Casey Martin handling the secondary. Good size up front with Mosley Allen and Spencer and Jackson and linebackers. Got some good size as well, too. But you got quick guys as well, too, with the likes of Tavion Scott and Xavier Jackson. And in the secondary, another Jackson and Kevin and Doran Mixon and Jeremiah Harrison all back there as well, too. A very useful defense for the Rams, too. Yeah, two, two sophomores and two juniors in that linebacking core. So very active but inexperienced. On a second down now, they lost three on that first down play. In fact, they have four freshmen that will let her. And we had motion in the backfield there. Jacob Metz was getting ready to move as the wing on the bottom of the set. We'll see if Rob Bachman's got that call. Dead ball. Ball start. 34. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And he does. I think we need that control alt delete for both teams. Reboot yeah. the entire system. Both teams getting off to a rugged start. First offensive play, Silver Knights have to take a timeout. They run one play, they come back out, and another penalty. We've had seven plays and six penalties. So plays lead by one. On the option, on the RPO, tossed the last minute to Hudson. Does he have any room? Tell you what, Whitehall might be down to nothing, but the defense is tenacious, especially to the outside, Jeff. There's nothing there. Uh, Jeremiah Harrison coming up from that cornerback spot, the 5'8", 155-pound junior just flying up. The important part here, this is RPO. Let's see if this is a pass. It is a run. But you can see penetration, and he did not lose contain around that corner. Great job by Jeremiah Harrison at the cornerback spot. The ball's at the 34 for the Silver Knights. They have to get it all the way down to the 43 of the Rams. They're about five minutes gone, so they need about 23 yards to get a first down. Parham's going to roll and look and gun, and the pass is caught. And the bad news is for the Silver Knights, the momentum of the receiver. Hudson takes him out of bounds, but he makes the catch to get some of that penalty yardage and more. And for Tyrese, that is his sixth catch of the season. Yeah, that's the tailback coming out of the backfield. He's lined up in a slot over there. He's able to find an open spot in the zone and a pretty good delivery by Darius Parham. His numbers are pretty good also, Randy. 23 of 42, 22 of 42 coming in, uh, throwing the football. Kevin O'Connell back to punt, averaging 38.9 per punt. Standing back at his own 32-yard line. Big statement for the Rams there, a defense to hold. Low snap there, gets it off. It's a line drive affair, and it's going to head out of bounds. So Whitehall now with the chance to, as you said, reset, hit the alt control delete. And Try to pretend this is a nothing-nothing game. They're down 10 early in this one here in the first quarter for the Rams. Rod Lightfoot in year number six. And last year, the team went six and four. Two years ago, they went 10 and two. Coming up at the start of the second quarter, we'll join Mike Todd on the custom air heating and cooling sideline for a conversation with Whitehall Yearling Principal Bill Warfield. That more coming up in this contest here in week number five. Jeff, I'm happy we've made it to week number five. I think it's terrific. I applaud all of these coaches, kids, administrators doing the things that are necessary to be able to be out here in this pandemic situation and being able to safely play the game of football. Interesting look. Three of the top, two to the bottom that time and brought down on the play after making the catch. Number 12, Tyrese Taylor made the catch, but not a whole lot there. In fact, he's going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, P.J. Daniels, number seven, came up and made a very high tackle. Did not get the face mask. He, the uh, official right on top of it, but watch how high this tackle is right around the shoulders. Good execution, and P.J. Daniels, a really good outside linebacker. Four solos and four assists on the season for the returning starter. In fact, no gain on the play, second down and 10. Triad to the bottom, one to the top, one back in the backfield on this second down play. Miles Walker needs some help. Boy, McGowan was there at the beginning of the play, and tight roping, nicely done by Tehran before he falls down at around the 44-yard line. The you, pressure was there early on. It was, and you could see the frustration of the young quarterback. He had broken contain, and all he had to do was get another yard for that first down. He's going to come up a little shy, but he breaks contain, and now he's got his eye on that first down marker, cuts on the inside foot, and even though this is a great track, he's not able to get it. 
third down and two, and that play looked a little disjointed. They had to get the ball to the 45-yard line, and they did not do it that time with Biles Walker on the carry. It seemed like the right side and the left side left at different times. I'll be curious to see what happens with Coach Lightfoot, see if he goes for it here. I think that these are kind of situations where things haven't gone well for you tonight, but you got to give your team a little bit of confidence here and go for it on fourth down. Two backs in the backfield on his fourth down and less than one from just past the 44-yard line. And giving ground, Biles Walker. Can he make it up? He does to the left side, across midfield. He's got a convoy, cuts it inside, and lost the ball. Did he step out of bounds? I think you heard the whistle. Yeah, he did at the 42-yard line is where he stepped out. So he did still try to cut it back inside. So that's why half the guys went after him and half didn't. But it's enough for the first down. And, Jeff, it looked like disaster to start that play. It really did, Randy. This play was designed to go to the right-hand side. And this is just pure athleticism. He just makes the play happen all on his own. That is another Bepler Insurance first down for free quotes. Call or check with Bepler Insurance at BeplerInsurance.com. Numbers on Miles Walker coming into this contest, but he's got the ball down to the 42-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from there. Out of 517 left. Big play for Whitehall, Randy. They've, nothing has gone right for them tonight from an offensive standpoint. And I think getting that first down, getting the ball on the short side of the 50-yard line, very important for the psyche of this football team. Looks like Jeremiah Harrison is in the backfield right now. Play clock will be operated on the field moving forward. Please turn off the play clock. They want the play clock turned off. It's going to be operated on the field, they said, from here on out. So they want the play clock turned off. They're going to operate it down on the field, according to our referee, Rob Bachman. So first and 10 from the 42-yard line of the Silver Knights. The toss back. Is there anywhere to go? And Harrison tries to find a little seam. Jeremiah 5'8", 155, and a junior. In that backfield, he's actually large. So a loss of a half yard on the play. Second down and nearly 11. So we are under five minutes left to go in the first quarter. Reedy with an early statement in this contest up by 10. Rams looking for an answer. One man in motion and the toss and trying to turn the corner and not a whole lot there. And the short side of the field is going to play against big number six on the play. And that's Melvin Scott as he tried to turn the corner. Just nothing there, Jeff. So it'll set up a third down and long. Yeah, that's that jet sweep coming across. Very slow developing. And how about the play by Darius Parham, who's the starting quarterback. We mentioned he goes both ways. Watch the free safety number 12 come flying up on the play right here. Boom. Out of nowhere comes up to make the play and hold him short of the first down. Six solos and two assists so far for Darius on uh, the season. First year starting on defense, kind of a long and physical guy. And, Jeff, this could be his position perhaps in college, I think, too, with the size he's got going 6'3 and, and 190. Now, that's a great basketball player as well, too. In fact, didn't really discover football on this level until about a year ago. So it'll be third down and about a dozen. Not even The Rams looking for a play and need something that will pick up a dozen yards. Our back judge is having a conversation with the Silver Knights on the sidelines. And we're ready for action now. Miles Walker given a lot of ground and brought down, dragged down back of the 40-yard line. The penetration there from Cole Matthews. Matthews, the linebacker with 14 solos, nine assists, and seven tackles for a loss. Make it eight now tackles for a loss. Randy, the important part of this play for Cole Matthews is he's got to put pressure on the quarterback, but do not lose contain. He can't allow the quarterback to get outside of him, and this is a great effort by Cole Matthews, engaged with the offensive lineman who was blocking him, but he also had that left eye out there trying to make sure that he got around the side to keep the containment inside. All right, so let's see what happens here now. On a fourth down play, are they going to shift somebody back out of this formation to punt? Under four left to go in the quarter. 
And just a quick little punt by Biles Walker. It's going to hang up there. Aiello's got it at 32, the 35, and tries to tightrope the sideline before he's knocked out of bounds. So Silver Knights will get it back now in his contest. 3.45 left to go in the first quarter. And we'll find out what happens now for Reedy on offense. We mentioned that, you know, Michael Schaefer and T.J. Burbridge handle the defense on offense. It's Joel Cutler and Matt Yoho. Matt, a quarterback just a few years ago for the Silver Knights. Remember when they had Brady Taylor and Akili Taylor as well, too? And, and Matt there in the backfield. And, you know, take a look at it. We've got a penalty on the field. A block in the back being called on Whitehall yearly. A little bit of momentum that time offensively for the Whitehall Rams where they were able to pick up a first down or two, Randy, but putting the ball back to the Silver Knights, and this ball was going to end up penalty actually going against Whitehall, it mm -hmm. appears. For a block in the back, so going to mark the ball up near the 49-yard line. The beanbag has been picked up, and here come the Silver Knights on offense, nearly touching it with the 50-yard line, so we'll call midfield the line of scrimmage on this Bepler Insurance first down. Hudson trying to get to the outside, and he cannot. Again, Whitehall has the speed to the outside. They've tested him a number of times early in this contest, but that time it's Jeremiah Harrison again coming up from a cornerback slot to make the hit. This is a learning opportunity for Ty Tyrese Hudson as he goes across here. The blocking is pushing out. You've got to plant that foot right here and sell it and get upfield. You can't always run sideline to sideline. You and eventually you've got to take that ball and get going north and south. So that'll be a learning opportunity when they study this film. Daniels in, Schultz out as a wide out. He goes widest to the top. A man in a slot to that side, a wing to the bottom, one back in the backfield. And it's Fitzsimmons who gets the handoff and just burrows his way down to the 45-yard line. Nice run on the play by Brian, who had 62 carries for 200 yards coming into this game. and Saw time at fullback last year. Coach Cutler says he's a very quiet guy except on the football field. Yeah, young football player, Randy, and... He's got a great upside, 5'10", 185 pounds. He is solid, has one rushing touchdown this season. You know, I'm thinking about small running backs, and think about the guy that just left Bishop Reedy, Jack Foley. You want to talk about a guy that was effective as a small yeah. running back? Wasn't he fun to watch? He was something else. Third down, we'll call it five. They're halfway home, or nearly 10 minutes through the first quarter. And I think we've got a timeout taken by the Silver Knights again. They will burn wow. their second. Bishop Reedy, their second of the half. They have one remaining. Whitehall with their full allotment of three timeouts. So a very staccato start to this contest for both of these teams in week number five. And we'll see what the Silver Knights have up their sleeves after this timeout. And just a reminder, don't miss the biggest plays for the biggest high school games in Central Ohio. Join Fox 28's Clay Hall for first scores on Fox 28 Friday at 10.45 p.m. Sponsored by Spectrum. And, Jeff, we should cover a couple things. First of all, we mentioned, you know, about the face guarding in high school football. It used to be a scenario where that was a penalty, but you can do that now. And I think it teaches bad defense, first of all, because I think once you get to the college level and go, well, I could do this in, in high school, well, you can't do it in college. Yeah, and I think, I think what'll, you know, while there's not a penalty for it, I think if you cover your man that way and there appears to be contact, I think you're giving yourself up to the official to be able to make that kind of a call. So it's a terrible practice to get into uh, because, again, as you mentioned, if you're going to play the game at the next level, that's not the way to play that defensive back position. And really the one major rule change this year in high school football comes to spiking the ball. You can now spike from the gun, but you have to catch the ball on the fly. It can't bounce back. Third down and five now from the 45-yard line of the Rams. Barham. Who wants to keep, boy, he got hit high and bent back right at the 47-yard line. So the Whitehall defense, after the little problems they had on offense in the first couple of minutes, able to shut down the Silver Knights again. Yeah, teaching moment for the quarterback here. He missed his read here on the option. He's looking at the defensive end. If he crashes, he's got to pitch that football. And a good job by Xavier Jackson, the outside linebacker, who was kind of juking back and forth what he was going to do. But if you're the quarterback coming down the line and that guy is eventually selling out on you, you've got to find a way to pitch that ball out to the trailing back. Young man who didn't play football last year, and Xavier Jackson doing a great job so far this season. There's the punt by O'Connell. And the return going to start for the six-yard line. I thought Biles Walker was going to look to throw it for a second there up across the 20 and scoots out of bounds at around the 24. Almost looked to me like he was taking the ball back in his right hand. And I thought, are we in Canada or something? But it'll be a first down for the Rams. They'll get it back down 10-0 in this contest and just over 90 seconds left to go in stanza number one. 
Reedy last year four and six, three years ago seven and four, eight and four before that, five years ago six and four. They missed the playoffs, barely finishing ninth, and then six years ago they were five and four. I have them with at least 14 playoff appearances. I remember the state championship back in 1983. So the Rams have it first and 10 on their own 24-yard line. Tight set again with one wide out to the bottom, that wing to the bottom as well, too, and one to the top. And the handoff, boy, there's nothing there. Handoff goes to Tyrese Taylor and looked for a seam on the left side, and awaiting him were a bevy of Silver Knights. Yeah, Jared Caboy, number 26, playing that defensive end position. Again, you look at the upside of some of these young football players that we're seeing here tonight. Just a sophomore, you can see he beats the offensive lineman to the inside and was right on top of the play. So it'll be second down after they lose a couple as we approach one minute left to go in the quarter. And again, nothing there. And the pursuit by McGowan and company to make the hit as Biles Walker saying, I need a little help, guys. But Jawan is a guy that I think I saw him in the past at running back and fullback and everything else. And now defensive end, good speed and spark and strong in the weight room as well, too. Well, Jawan McGowan is a beast out there, very thick in terms of how he plays the game. Certainly passes the look test and the execution test on that play. Third down and long, approaching half a minute left to go. Biles Walker wants to throw. And there's no room to get that ball away. Great pursuit and penetration by the Silver Knights again. Cole Matthews is there. Also, Devon Malone coming through to help as well. And now the Rams forced a punt again. This has got to be very frustrating for the Whitehall Rams because they're not able to get anything started offensively. Again, they're trying to roll their quarterback a little bit, but he's got to get outside of the tackle box, in my opinion, to be able to see downfield and to make something happen. But the defensive ends are doing a good job. And again, Cole Matthews that time coming up and running up the field, making sure that he keeps that quarterback on the inside. And that's the end of the first quarter. It's Reedy with the early scores, clinging to a 10-0 lead as we head to quarter number two and week number five. This is Honda's Thursday Night Lights, presented by Columbus State Community College, right here on the CW Columbus. We are joined by the principal at Whitehall Yearling High School, Bill Warfield. Bill, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Been in school about four weeks, and you've just made the, trans uh, the transition from remote to hybrid. What's that experience been like so far for you guys? It's been great just having the kids back in the building. I think that's been the, the, the most, I mean, the rewarding part. I mean, we put all these plans together, and our kids this week have done an absolutely amazing job of just following rules, procedures, and making sure well, they're just doing the right thing. So it's been fantastic. Our staff's done a great job of working with our kids, providing a safe environment. So it's been a great experience. What has impressed you the most so far, as far as the teachers go, adapting to this new yeah, world? I mean, this in? is different. I mean, and uh, what they've done is they've adapted. And I think that's the part that has been the most impressing, is just how they've adapted to this situation and our students, how they've adapted as well. Um, just trying to make this the best experience for our kids as possible. Okay. What are you looking forward to coming up this year at Whitehall Yearling? Yeah, I mean, this is my first year here, so I mean, everything is brand new. So everything happens now. I'm just looking forward to it. I mean, every day we wake up um, and just getting to know our kids, getting to build relationships with people and getting to know the community. So it's been good. I'm looking forward to all of it. What's the response been this week at Whitehall knowing you guys are going to be on Thursday night? Everybody's nights? excited. I mean, you get an opportunity to come here to Obets and play on a Thursday night. That's just a great experience for our students, our student athletes, a great experience for our community to have an opportunity to watch. So it's, been, it's just been a good week. All right, Bill, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Once you. again, Bill Warfield, the principal at Whitehall Yearling High School, guys. Thank you very much, Mike. And the Silver Knights have it back now. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. And the quick pop on the slant. Pass incomplete. Intended for Andy Schultz and just a little behind him on that attempt, Jeff. Yeah, a little disappointing that from a timing standpoint. That looked like a pretty easy pass and catch. But obviously, Darius Parham was... Maybe blinded a little bit in, in terms of the passing lane that was there, but a pretty good slant pattern run by Andy Schultz. I want to thank Steve Adams, too, the guy that really is the brains behind this facility here at Fortress Hope. That's for the great job that he does and setting it up and work with him on a number of events. He is first class all the way. Second down and 10 now from inside the 34-yard line for the Silver Knights. Parm from the pistol look with that wing to the top. I'm going to hand it off and 
that. Simmons gets it inside the 30 to around the 29 yard line. So nice gain on the play around the left side. And again, you mentioned it, Jeff, looking at that. You look at Brian Fitzsimmons, you look at the frame and the fact that he's just a sophomore is almost hard to believe. Yeah, he's been the best part of the offense so far early in this football game. Good job by the offensive line, creating opportunities. And I think at this stage, quick hitting this defense is probably more advantageous than taking slow developing plays like jet sweeps that go across the formation. Go ahead and pound it right at the Whitehall defense. Tamir Mosley Allen made the hit on the play. They're halfway home. It's third down and five now from the 29 yard line. Mets in motion. Parm to keep. And then lost the handles. He tried to pitch. It's still free across the 30 around the 33 yard line. Who's got it? Rams think they do. Coach Lightfoot clapping right now and enjoying it. We'll see what happens as they unsort the pile. And Whitehall's got it. The Rams have come up with the football. Well, the person the, of number 19, Jeff, excuse me, and that is Jalen Townsend. Yeah, running the option into the boundary, into the short side of the field. You can see the snap a little bit behind the quarterback, but you got to give it up to De DeLeon Jackson. The defensive end actually tipped that ball, created the fumble. Watch DeLeon Jackson, number nine, comes in there. Is able to make it happen. Nearly recovered the ball. Whitehall's going to get the ball back in great field position. First and 10 from their own 42-yard line, trailing 10-0 here in this contest as we unsort that pile. And again, Townsend comes up with the ball. Rams need a couple more guys on the field. Now, how many do they have out there now? I'm going to go with three to the top, two to the bottom, empty backfield. On a Spepler Insurance first down. And a different quarterback in there. Pass is complete for a short gain on the play. At that time, Elijah Hughes is in at quarterback now. We mentioned 6'2", 165 on a sophomore. Lacks some experience. Good hit on the play made by big number seven for Reedy, and that's P.J. Daniels. Elijah, a little taller back there, obviously, at 6'2", instead of 5'5", five, five, and maybe they're thinking he's got a better opportunity to see over that defense. Gain of a couple. Watch the throw, and flag down on the play. Pass is short. It short hops the intended receiver on the play at around the 48-yard line, and that was Melvin Scott. We'll see what the hanky's all about. Hanky rests at the 47-and-a-half-yard line. Rob Bachman. Look at that again. Elijah Hughes throwing that ball off his back foot. He's got to get his feet set to be able to deliver that ball. I don't care how big and strong your arm is. Illegal block, defense, number 34, 10-yard penalty, first down. So the penalty will move the chains for the Rams and get them across midfield for the first time in this contest. Illegal block by the defense. Right there. Happened in the middle of the field there. And so now they'll move the ball across midfield to the 46-yard line, and that's where the Rams will have it. Down 10 nothing. Mark of one and three. Both combatants play football in the Mid-State League. And the commissioner of the league, Jim Hayes, will join us to start the second half. Little toss goes to Biles Walker. I'm not sure what he was going to do with it, but the fact was he had no options because as soon as he got the ball, Jared Caboy was waiting for him. Yeah, that's one of those plays, Randy, that takes a lot of practice time to be able to get the timing down, and I do think he was going to throw the football here. I think he had plans to be able to drop back, let it go downfield, but Jared Caboy, who's been very active tonight on that defense, was thinking otherwise. Caboy with a kaboom means a loss of six on the play second down, and we'll call it 16. Pass across the middle. Boy, that's into traffic. Tipped around. Was it caught? Somebody may have come up with a football in that pile, and it's number 12, but was it caught on the fly? If it was, that's a first down for the Rams as Tyrese Taylor is the guy that came up with a football. All right, this play is not designed to have three receivers within three feet of one another. You talk about failure of social distancing. Look at this. Three receivers in the same spot. I promise you that was not executed right, but it creates a first down for Whitehall. Just the way you draw it up. First down and 10 from the 31, a gain of 15 on the play. Go back to that play? Maybe not. On the far side, quick little out. Give me a block, he says, and he doesn't need it early on. Nice move that time by Melvin Scott after the catch to kind of spin and take it to the inside, pick up some good yardage on the play. Again, Jeff, you're talking about if you're going to attack, attack quickly, whether it's up the middle or to the outside for either of these teams. And it seems like getting rid of the football quickly is the thing that they have to do because look again at the pressure that the Silver Knights were giving, and now the athleticism of Melvin Scott takes over, a young man that's got... 
two uh, rushing, or excuse me, two uh, receptions for touchdowns already this year. He's been their go-to guy. He likes reading track in English on his second down play. A little quick pop for a middle screen. Oh, giving ground is always a dangerous thing to do, and Melvin Scott found out about that. When you get that middle screen, Jeff, go north and south is where you want to go and not east and west. Again, Eli Hughes, just a sophomore quarterback, 6'2", dumping the ball right here. You would think pretty good, but what happens is Devin Malone, that nose tackle, felt the no blocking pressure right there, and he started dropping back right away. Great job by Devin Malone. He likes world history in baseball. Devon goes 6-2-3-0-1 in a junior. Hughes wants to throw, now rolls. Can he find some yardage? He can along the sidelines. Tiptoes, and does he cross the 20? He does, and Hughes gets the first down. Nice rollout, and he made something happen out of nothing. Yeah, this was the biggest fear that Coach Cutler had. The head football coach of the Silver Knights was the athleticism of this football team being able to break contain and make you miss. What a really nice job of blocking out on the perimeter that time by Melvin Scott, who had to catch the play previous and was able to come up and be a blocker on the perimeter. Rob Bachman has tried twice to throw a towel off the field, and it went about a total of six yards on both tosses, and finally a Whitehall Ram picks it up and tosses away. So we're inside the Schiff and Associates red zone, inside the 20-yard line on this first down play. Guns the out. The pass is caught at the 15-yard line and carrying the defenders all the way down to the 11-yard line. Strong run that time after the catch by Kevin Jackson, who's just a junior. Kevin Jackson, who doubles as a tailback and a wide receiver, got in the slot that time. Pretty well thrown. Got it out there. Nice defense, Randy, but you got to tackle a little bit better because he was able to pick up another four or five yards with that second and third effort. Well, Jeff, all these specialists right now seem to be multiple threats out there. They can play all over the place. You know, wide receiver, running back, quarterback, and Reedy was late getting their last guy on the field, so they burned their third and final timeout. As they do that, we'll take one, two, eight, 13 left to go in the first half. It is 10 nothing. Reedy on top. This is week number five of Honda's Thursday Night Lights, presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus. Hey, we know mornings are different, but Good Day Columbus on ABC6 and Fox 28 remain on your side from the moment you get out of bed. From overnight changes to what's happening in your neighborhood, be sure to wake up with Kurt, Jessica, Buck, and Katie weekday mornings on ABC6 and Fox 28. You know, in that first quarter, Jeff, Whitehall had a grand total of negative 57 yards total offense. They had the only first down between the two teams in the first quarter, but things have changed for both squads here in the second. Speaking of second, it's second down. Hughes retreating about 20 yards and dumps it off at the last minute to Biles Walker. Can he get anywhere near the line of scrimmage? He cannot. And there's a flag at the end of the play. Boy, Jeff, he gave up about 20 yards. Randy, that had a play, that play had an odor from the very beginning. Was not going to go well, and probably quarterback Eli Elijah Hughes probably should have just dumped the ball. Force out of bounds by Aiello. Block in the back. And Matthews. Against the offense is going to compound things. Again, at this stage right here, you start to feel the pressure and watch the great job that linebacker Jacob Metz did, number 34, pushing the receiver back off of the course and did not create the opportunity. And then you see the block in the back right there getting up off of the pile. So the beanbag is back at the 34-yard line. They need to get the ball to the nine, so they need 25 yards. Didn't waste that math minor, did I? <laughs> the plus minus in yardage is the swings have been dramatic yeah. in this game. Play by play. Second down. Hughes going long downfield to the far side, and the receiver, can he jump ball and come up with it? Nope. Pass is incomplete, intended on the play for Tyrese Taylor. Coverage by Andy Schultz. Yeah, he's their go-to speed guy, and they want to give him as many 50-50 balls as they possibly can. They feel like he's got a great opportunity, just a little bit of missed timing back there. And Andy Schultz, who's at five foot nine, going up against Tyrese Taylor, a little bit taller, able to make a good defensive play. So it's third down and 25 for Hughes and company. Empty backfield again. It's 
complete inside the 25-yard line, and that is Jackson, and Kevin's going to get it down and fight to around the 18, so he'll get back with all that <laughs> near the original line of scrimmage, but now it's fourth down, and it's going to be 10, and we've got uh, some shenanigans going down. A little trash talking after the play. Kept, kept the play alive, did Elijah Hughes, and was able to find Kevin Jackson out in the flat, doing a good job of making people miss, and that's going to frustrate Coach Cutler in terms of being able to make tackles in the open field. They want to be more sure in their tackling than what they have been. So Jesus Yanez Elkater is coming back on the field. He is their punter as well, too. And he's going to attempt a field goal, it looks like. Had an 18-yarder against Grandview, and this one is going to be about a 35-yard attempt. Let's see if the Rams burn a timeout. And, and they, they do. do. We had a we had a rumor um, that was going around in practice to, before the game that this young man hit a 50-yard field goal. Now, it's a rumor because you and I didn't see it, but Mr. Bassford over here says he witnessed a 50-yard field goal. Now, again, no pressure. Nobody blocking, nobody rushing. Steve, so 35 I think th ought to be a chip shot. I think that's a personal affront to you, Steve, but that's just me. <laughs> it's the coolest <laughs> halftime show in Central Ohio. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll break down the hottest stars and the coolest plays thus far in the custom air heating and cooling cool plays of the first half. And I say cool to that. That's coming up at halftime on the Music Go Round halftime show. So some stretching by the Rams on the field, and they're actually practicing the snap. You see that along the far side? Good use of time. That's interesting. You don't see that very often. Melvin Scott is the holder. They have struggled a little bit, snapping the football. Had one go way over the head of the punter. David Weingartner is the center. Saw some time last year as a junior. Likes working on cars, traveling and working out. And also helps his mom with the Whitehall Rams Sports Club. So here we go. The holder again is Scott. It'll be about a 35-yard attempt for Jesus. Snap, the kick. He's got plenty of leg. Is it good? It is. The Rams are on the board. It's now 10-3 in this contest. We've had a touchdown, a two-point conversion, a safety, and a field goal. What else is left? With that being said, we'll take a break in this contest. 10-3, the count in this one. You are watching Honda's Thursday Night Lights, presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus. And welcome back to Fortress Obets. And here's your score. This contest so far, 10-3. And that young man got the three points for the Rams for their first three in this game. And there's your Hilliard Lawn and Garden scoring summaries. They go 12 plays, 40 yards, and just about four minutes. He surfed off the clock to get the first three in this contest for Whitehall Yearling. That would be a football on a tee. Waiting for a foot to contact it. And you saw it right there courtesy of image video, but wait, we have a whistle and a flag. Do they leave too early? We have offsides. We'll do it again. We liked it so much, Jeff. One more time. <laughs> Let's do it again. Rob Bachman's been a busy man so far in the first half, along with Matt Wilson, Josh Bricker, Jeff Gerken, and Mark Barker. So he will not announce anything on this because it's the responsibility of the linesman to do something like that on the kick. So we'll mark it back to the 35-yard line. We've had kicks from the 40, the 35, an attempt from the 20, and the 15-yard line. Yeah, you look at the score 10 to 3, and you might think that's a traditional score. No. And it is far from that, other than the field goal for the three points. We've had a touchdown, a safety. Two-point conversion. They go for two. The only type of score we don't have is a normal point after touchdown. And we did it again. Are we serious here? We're going to mark it back to the 30. So that's a new yardage we haven't kicked from. Gentlemen, start your engines. Oh, no. Move it back five. We'll try it again from the 30-yard line. Whitehall, last year 6-4, and four, two years ago 10-2, and two, three years ago 7-4, and four, four years ago 8-3, and three, five years ago 6-4. and four. 2009, beat Lyndon McKinley, I remember, to end a 35-game losing streak. Playoffs, though, in 2016, 17, and 18. And I've got him as 500 or better for seven straight seasons. And in the series, Whitehall has done pretty well as of late. They've won four straight. Last year, they won 20 to 10. Two years ago, 49-14. And three years ago, 32 to 2 was the final tally. 
And it's picked up at the 24. And the return will come up to around the 38-yard line. And I think we're done kicking the football. It's on the return that time for the Silver Knights, Andy Schultz. Tomorrow night, fans get a double dose of Honda's Thursday Night Lights with a special Friday night edition starting at 7 o'clock when the pioneers of Bolton Tangy Orange travel to take on the Jaguars of Hilliard Bradley High School. That's tomorrow night on a special Friday edition of Honda's Thursday Night Lights. Randy, you talked about how busy the officials have been. Whitehall, seven penalties tonight for 37 yards. We're just into the second quarter. And Reedy, four penalties on their own for 25 yards in this game. First and 10, Silver Knights up by seven now with the ball resting at the 38-yard line. Barmet quarterback with two men in the backfield. And he's going to hand it off, and that's Fitzsimmons who gets it up to the 39-yard line and maybe falls forward to the 40, and that's about it. Brian, a guy that saw some time at fullback last year. And, you know, this is a guy, too, in Brian that's really adjusting Jeff to the high school game because he's the kind of guy that could outrun everybody in middle school. But obviously it's a different world once you get to high school and become a freshman and then a sophomore. Yeah, it truly is. And before he could get much energy going up inside, Tamir Mosley-Allen, number seven, the defensive end, was there to make a play. And, Randy, this offensive line for the Silver Knights is a little shuffled tonight. Guys playing... Uh, covering for uh, each other there, and uh, they're doing a, a, a good job up front, but some of these guys playing a different position tonight than what they were last week. Second down, and they need just more than eight to move the chains, and around the left side they go, and they get the ball up to around the 41-yard line, and that's about it. Boy, Rod Lightfoot is a big cheerleader on that sideline for his defense, and you can see why as Jeremiah Spencer, big number 56, makes the hit on the play for the Rams. Well, Jeremiah Spencer makes this play while he's on the ground. He gets buried right here, but watch. He's able to make the play while he was on the ground, and that's why he's celebrating right there, and he should. That was a terrific play. He got Parm and the beanbag at the same time. So mark the ball up to the 41-yard line. It'll be third down from there. They need about seven to move the sticks. More than halfway through quarter number two. Darius wants to throw. Pressure's on and slides down at the 35-yard line. Lost his balance, but waiting there to hug him was Tavion Scott as well to the linebacker. Boy, good pressure. You know, the Silver Knights have been less than prolific in terms of putting points on the board so far this season, averaging only 18 and a half points per game. But this kind of pressure on your quarterback on a third and long is not going to create an opportunity to put points on the board. So a punting situation now for Evan O'Connell. O'Connell. Last year's kicker, by the way, A.J. Craddock, is now a kicking coach for the Silver Knights. They've had some good ones down through the years. Good snap. Pressure right up the middle. It's blocked. Got a piece of that one. It's rolling around the 39-yard line and down there, and the Rams get the pressure on, and they block the kick. And now they'll have excellent field position coming off a drive where they got a field goal. When we've seen about everything you could possibly see on special teams tonight, too, Randy. Good snap, just a little slow, getting the ball off, and the pressure coming right up the middle. I thought it was Davion Henderson. We'll see if number four is the guy that blocks this. Looked like it to me as well. Just a little slow getting there, but they, they can't have that kind of pressure yep. coming up the front. You see the contact made with the kicker, but that is okay as long as you have tipped the football, which is exactly what happened there. Whitehall is in business at the 39. Henderson with the block. Hughes with the handoff to Biles Walker. Nothing to his right. Tries to cut back. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and no more than that before he's whipped down on the play, and the hit is made for the Silver Knights by Jared Caboy. There's Rod Lightfoot, the head coach. Watch the signaling here. They have almost no returning experience in the offensive line whatsoever, Jeff, when you take a look at what the Rams have back. And the offensive coordinator, former St. Charles head coach, Jeff Farian, up here in the booth with us. Like me, it took both of us about an hour to get upstairs here. Hughes wants to go long downfield into traffic, and that one is knocked away. Ooh, again, a dangerous pass thrown downfield, and the pass swatted away on the play for the Silver Knights by Sage Tilly. Yeah, Tilly already one interception so far this year, nearly came up with his second. Ball thrown right over the middle, and once again, Randy, two Whitehall receivers in the same area. This is not the design that they're looking for in their passing scheme because that creates more blue shirts. You got to get a situation where you've got guys spread out out there. Third and 11 for Hughes. Pressure to his left, rolls away from that. 
What can he get on his third down? He needs 10. Can he put his head down? He burrows. Does he get the first down? He may have it beyond the sticks along the far side of the field at around the 29-yard line. We've talked about the play of the defensive ends doing a good job of keeping the quarterback in and not letting him break contain. That time, Elijah Hughes was able to break contain. I want you to watch on the right side of your screen. The defensive end has that tough responsibility of turning plays back inside, and there he was an unable to make that happen. Metz knocked him into the sidelines. First and 10 now from the 29-yard line. Under four left to go. Quick pop to Biles Walker. Inside the 25, down the sidelines, 20, 15. Toronto inside the five. Did he step out of bounds? I'm thinking he stepped out of bounds back up field here. We'll see where they mark this now with 3.45 left. No signal by the officials, but it looks like the side judge or the line judge has got him stepping out of bounds at about the nine and a half yard line. We'll get a good look at it here. Good execution, nice block on the perimeter. And this is just athleticism taking over. Let's see. Tight roping the sidelines here. Does he step out of bounds? Right yep. there, he does. Great job by the officials. But how about the extra effort of this young man making people miss and being able to take it into the end zone? Just stepped out of bounds at the last second right there. Good Inside job. The, the Scott Schiff and Associates red zone, and the pass is complete to the far side of the field. Marginal gain on the play as he gets it out to Tyrese Taylor. And the clock right now ticking down to three and a half. Let's go in the first. Yeah, do we get great pictures from our crew or what? I Dean mean, Marini. On top of that, that was outstanding, yeah. guys. Great job. And the crew are geniuses. They do a fabulous job. And there's Mr. Biles Walker, who's seen a lot of action. Probably not where he thought. He thought he'd be probably seeing more time at quarterback, but becoming more of a wide receiver in this contest now. Second down and goal. Think of the number of mistakes that Whitehall has made tonight, Randy. And they are right in the middle of this football game. Chance to tie. Quarterback sneak off the right side. And Hughes, does he break the plane? He does. Touchdown. And just like that, the Rams were within, within one point of tying this contest. And once again, there's another Ramos roofing touchdown for a free estimate on your roof. Text or call 614-761-ROOF. And what was 10-0 is now 10-9. You know, in the first few minutes of this game, it looked like they were going to fire the bus up and head back to Whitehall before this game was over. But this is great coaching, great leadership on this football team to be able to keep your focus and to be able to get back into this football game. And just like that, we're going to get our first extra point try. We'd have everything then. <laughs> we have and everything. it would not the game, and we'd start all over again. How about that? Jesus, Yanez Elcotter picks it up. Plenty of leg. It is up, and what do you know? We are tied at 10 with 3.05 left to go first half. There's a happy man and just a sophomore, too, in Elijah Hughes, who they say lacks experience. But, you know, Jeff, size is important at quarterback, and he's got that height to be able to see over the line. He's thrown a couple into coverage. One, he got lucky where they had three defenders and three wideouts, but that time able to show his running ability as well, too, to take it in for a touchdown, and now we're tied at 10. As the first half will come to a close, stick around. We'll hear from the leading coach and the trailing coach in the Bob Evans Coach's Corner with our very own birthday boy that popped out of his own cake, Mike Todd. No one else got him a cake, so he had to make it himself. It was a DQ cake, though, so it worked out pretty well for him. He doesn't look 73, though, does he? <laughs> he looks amazing. Great. He looks awesome. Here's your Hilliard Lawn and Garden scoring summary. Took just over 90 seconds, six plays, nearly 40 yards. It was a distance of an earlier drive, too. When's your birthday, just out of curiosity? January. Somehow we miss you. In January. All right. Did you plan it that way? Or? Unless we start doing hockey together, Randy, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Or the playoffs could last a while <laughs> this year, too, because everybody can play. You can play, and you can play, and we'll see who decides to play and who opts out. Because if I'm a team that's struggling, I'm not sure I want to play a powerhouse in the first round and maybe play my neighborhood rival instead, too. That's a deep kick, and that's going to go into the end zone and get a touchback. So... The Silver Knights will get it back. They're now tied at 10 with 3.05 left to go in the first half. Well, Reedy, from an offensive standpoint, Randy, has been very inconsistent tonight. They just have not been able to get any momentum going. Brian Fitzsimmons seems to be the most positive thing from an offensive standpoint that they've had. I look for Darius Parham and company to light it up here later in this contest, but we'll find out what happens. The Ram defense has been really tough, especially the outside, but hats off to the Silver Knights defense. They've played a solid contest as well, too. First and 10 from the 20-yard line for Parham and company. Two way wide to either side. And not this time. 
We sung the praises from Mr. Fitzsimmons, but that time the defense comes shooting through, and that guy had some help there on your screen. Big number seven, Tamir Mosley Allen. And there'll be a loss on the play. Senior defensive end came unblocked. And a lot of times on the read option, Randy, you're going to have guys that are unblocked. Quarterback has to be able to read that. And when he saw the defensive end crashing like that, he's got to pull the ball and go out and execute the option. Second down and 11. They lost a yard on the play. They'll readjust the wing to the bottom of the set now. A little toss back, and it goes behind Hudson. Can he hunt it down? He does back inside the five and around the three-yard line. But it's going to be third down and long that time as Hudson found the handle, but a big loss for the Silver Knights. That's at least the second time that they've had difficulty being able to run that option and get the ball exchanged between the quarterback and the tailback timed up. You can see there, that is behind the running back. That's all on the QB, and Darius knows it. He's got to do a better job of getting that ball out in front of that tailback, and they're very lucky they were able to recover this football. So mark the ball back at the three-yard line. They need 27 yards on this third down play. Let's see if Whitehall takes a timeout. They do with 144 left to go. So they'll take a timeout. Officially, we'll call it 143. I was wondering if they would because they have a chance now to pin him deep, and they'll still have one more timeout left. So we'll see what happens here in the winning moments of the first half of week number five. And at the end of the second quarter, stick around. It's the Music Go Round halftime show featuring the Music Go Round marching band sound. Tonight, Mike Todd profiles the pride of the Silver Knights and gives you a peek at their halftime performance. All that more coming up on the Music Go Round halftime show. You and I will look at the highlights, and it will be an eclectic group of highlights. There will be a variety of different things. We have seen just about everything tonight in terms of penalties. What was the one early in the game? Uh, despicable? Was it, <laughs> what was it? Do you remember? You don't even remember the name. Disconcerting. Disconcerting yes. It was despicable. <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard that before. I'm going to have to check with some of my OHSAA official friends to see if that is actually something that is in the book. Well, despicable. if anybody would know about Despicable, it would be you. So My You're just trying goodness. to get multi-symbolic here on us. So. <laughs> All right, so a big play here for both sides as Whitehall trying to shut it down and pinch him back and let's see if they burn another timeout after this play perhaps as well too. As Parham from the gun is actually going to stand two yards deep in his own end zone. Hands it off, and Fitzsimmons has got a hole. And Brian will take it up to the 15-yard line. Good decision to run the football there and run the clock. You can see it's continuing to run down now at a minute and 30 remaining. We've got uh, Whitehall yearling with no timeout. I thought we had Bishop Reedy using all three of theirs. Yeah, Bishop Reedy used all yeah. three. I think Whitehall has one remaining. I so thought. that little blip you see on the screen there belongs over with Whitehall yearling for one timeout remaining. Evan O'Connor to punt from his own five-yard line. Miles Walker standing back at midfield. Snap a little low. He's got it this time. It's not blocked. And he's going to run up on the ball, catch it. Will Biles Walker at the 50. Tamir to the far side, 45, glides to the 40 and knocked out of bounds at the 38. And that's where the ball will go over to Whitehall with just under one minute left to go here in the first half. Miles Walker returns on punt. Again, we've seen two quarterbacks out of the Whitehall Rams tonight. Teron Biles Walker, you see right there, number 17. And number 10, who has his back to us right now, is the other quarterback, Elijah Hughes. And there, there's a flag one of the officials is standing on top of. We have a personal foul, I think, coming up against Whitehall. Personal foul. Wow. Blind side block, number nine on the receiving team. 15-yard penalty, first down. We were screened by the flag by one of the officials right by his foot, so I thought I saw that along the far hash mark there, so that's going to hurt the Rams because they were going to have a short field, and now instead it's going to be marked at their own 47-yard line. Funny how the game has changed, Randy, those blindside blocks. We used to refer to those as slobber knockers, and those are ones you got like Buckeye leaves on your helmet for if you had one of those, but now in terms of safety, they've eliminated it. A little bubble to the far side, the short side on this Pepler. Insurance first down, and he'll get it across midfield. On the catch that time, it goes to Tyrese Taylor. And that took about five seconds off the clock. So the beanbag just past the 46, inside there to the 45. It'll be second down from there. Second and short, they need about three, but most importantly right now is what's left on the clock. And we've seen that their kicker does have a leg. He can make it from at least 35. Hughes. Reedy showing blitz. In fact, they may have shown it a little too early. Good hard count that time by Eli Hughes, the quarterback. 
getting the Reedy defensive line to jump. What do you got, Rob? Dead ball. Encroachment. Defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. That'll move the sticks and will move the ball down to inside the 41-yard line. So first down and 10 for the Rams from there with 54 seconds left to go. What do they need, Jeff? Probably another 15 yards for a shot? Yeah, I think so. You know, they, again, we, we, we know that the young man can make it work from 40, maybe even 50 yards. So Hughes straight back to throw and sees a gap to the right side. Can he move to the outside? He does. Can he get out of bounds? He does it. Great job. He's got a great sense of the sideline, too. That's something that's kind of hard to coach, especially when you got a sophomore running the show and really a guy that hasn't seen much of that time at quarterback. Well, he, he recognized the pressure, did a good job of right now stepping up into the, into the pocket, and then watch this. Great move in the middle of the field and then able to come up with the first down. From the 30-yard line with just over 45 seconds left to go. Hughes straight back to throw from the pocket. Has to roll left. He's got pressure backside. He's going to tuck. Can he get to the sidelines again? He tries, and he cannot. Bent down at the 26-yard line. Lock's he's going to run. Give burn a timeout. And they're going to take the timeout with 26 seconds left. Rod Lightfoot's going to try and get the officials to maybe put some more time back on the clock. He was arguing that we were trying to get a timeout. Let's see what happens here. There he is talking to the lead official. I was trying to get somebody's attention. And I could not. He said because the play went to the far side of the field. So he's going to try to see if he can go ahead and broker something here. Probably to no avail. But with that being said, I want to remind you, you don't have to miss Honda's Thursday Night Lights when you're away from your television. Watch every game online at thecwcolumbus.com. A big thank you to Kroger Distribution Center for sponsoring tonight's matchup. So with that being said, Jeff, we kind of alluded to the playoffs a little bit. Are you excited about the format where everybody can get in if they want to play? Well, I think the, the, the fact that this is an unusual year and the uncertainty of being able to you know, have the number of games that you were going to be able to have. And I, I think all the teams need to be commended for doing things right and being able to get through the number of games that we've had so far. And and I like the idea of being able to have that extension and the teams, if they lose in the playoffs or they opt out, will have the ability, if they want to continue to schedule games, no more than 10 total games played, but they'll be able to do it. And I, I, I just like the idea that these kids are going to be able to have something of a normal football season. Second down and five now for the 25. Under 30 seconds left to go in the quarter. Quad to the top now. I think we had a guy left early. Yeah, we did. One of the wideouts. The second one from the inside left early. So we'll have a false start in the offense. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Number six. Five-yard penalty. And that is important now because, again, we're looking at the distance that can be kicked for a field goal. And we know so we've seen a 35-yarder from Jesus Yanez Elcotter already in this contest. But right now, you're looking at a 47-yard attempt if nothing positive happens. And remember, too, Whitehall's out of timeouts. So they have to get out of bounds or spike the ball. And again, this year, you can spike the ball from the gun, which you couldn't do in the past. So second down and 10 negates the five-yard gain. Four receivers at the top of the page there that you're looking run all those guys deep down the field and I think the guy you want to maybe look to is at the bottom of your screen who's going to have single coverage that's Kevin Jackson let's see if they look right and throw left going right and going down on the out pattern has his man makes the catch at the sidelines and heads out of bounds nicely done this piles Walker on the catch right around the 15 yard line I think the two quarterbacks throwing the ball to one another is excessive hogging of the football tonight what do you think that's despicable <laughs> I mean, this guy, they, they, they decide to put Teron Biles Walker out in that receiver spot, and his quarterback, Elijah Hughes, comes in. Nice outcut, found the sidelines, and was able to stop the clock again. And with 19 seconds, they've got a first down from the 15 yard line. So here, again, you're looking for something in the end zone or towards out of bounds, and that one was thrown up for grabs, and that one, they were lucky as they're inside the Scott Schiff and Associates red zone that that was not picked off because waiting for that football there, and it was just overthrown to his side was Andy Schultz. Hogging the ball, how would the signal go for that? Would it be <laughs> like that? <laughs> That's probably okay. a good one. All right. 
Davion Henderson, the intended receiver, number four, coming across the middle. That's one of those things where you, what you've got to do is you've got to make sure you finish your route if you're that receiver because you have no idea who that quarterback is going to look to to be able to throw the ball. I wonder if they attempt a field goal after this play. Well, they cannot get tackled in the field of play, Randy. They're going to have a tough time getting lined up and stopping the clock. 15 ticks left to go in a second down and 10 from the 15. Pressure on. Dumps to Biles Walker. Finds a gap. He needs to get the first down or get out of bounds or get a touchdown, and he might get the touchdown. Did he get in? Yes, they're saying touchdown. Miles Walker gets it in. It's a Ramos roofing touchdown, and it's now 16 to 10 in this contest with five seconds left to go. That didn't look like it was going to go anywhere, Randy. This is just going to be a quick RPO. Give it to your guy that's got all the juice, be able to make people miss. And he's able to stretch for the pylon right here. Kept himself in bounds. And the score by the young quarterback turned receiver running back Teron Biles Walker. And Jesus Yanez Elcotter to attempt the extra point. The Rams were down 10 0. And with that extra point that is up and good, they now lead in this contest 17 unanswered from the Rams up by a converted touchdown. And that man, for a quarterback, is a pretty good wide receiver. And he really is. Uh, very impressive and fr a little frustrating at the beginning of the football game because he was unable to really get anything going from the quarterback spot, but he wasn't getting much of an opportunity. But all of a sudden, you make the change. Elijah Hughes has gone back in there and done a really decent job. Easy pass and catch. And then you just like. You just let the athleticism take over here. And this is just mano a mano. I'm going to beat you to the corner of the end zone. And he did exactly that. Well, the key was, first of all, can you get the first down? Because you weren't near the sidelines then. And then once you got the first down, go for the goal line. Might and well they was able to do that. Right? Yeah. So he gets the touchdown. And there's your Hilliard Lawn and Garden scoring summary. Seven plays, 47 yards. Their drives have been like 39, 39, and 47. And 54 seconds off the clock. And give it back now to Reedy in the waning moments of the first half. Remember, Reedy won the toss and deferred, so the Silver Knights will get the ball to start the second half. So, Rod Lightfoot, the first two minutes that seemed like a nightmare have now turned around pretty nicely for him. And for Joel Cutler, he's got to find the tonic for his team at the break. And for Whitehall, they have to try to get the kickoff without getting offside twice. It's a clean one this time. But the kick's going to go out of bounds. So, what do you want to do here? You want to make him kick again? You know, Jeff, we're in week five. We'll wait for Rob Bachman to make this call. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. Can you clean up some of these mistakes? Obviously, some teams have had scrimmages or only one. In this case, Whitehall has had none. But, I mean, can you clean up a lot of these mistakes at halftime? Well, you know, we've mentioned over the last week or two, Randy, that all these coaches feel like they're still in preseason camp because of the limited number of activities that they've been able to present in practice and, and uh, you know, camps that they might have had during the summertime. And so trying to get all their team together to make things happen like this is very difficult. And the Silver Knights fall on the football at the 39-yard line in the person of Mets. So that is where Jacob has it. And let's see if the Silver Knights can get off one last play before the end of the first half. Kickoff is down by Mets. So Reedy comes in at 2-2, two and two, Whitehall at 1-3. And, and early on, it was Whitehall making mistakes. Reedy capitalizing on those. And now they're down, though, 17-10. With four ticks left to go. Under center, going to take a knee here. And that'll do it for the first half. So Whitehall turns it around. Reedy, about to go back to the drawing board right now. And on offense, there has not been a whole lot of rainbows for the Silver Knights in the first half, have there? You know, Randy, they just haven't been able to get any momentum going. The first 10 points of this ball game scored by the defensive football team or the uh, a kick that was recovered in the end zone, a safety. Uh, it just, you know, they've really struggled from an offensive standpoint getting any momentum going. And also, you know, early in this game, down 10 to nothing and nothing going right for Whitehall. I fully expected them to fire the bus up and head back to Whitehall, but God bless them. They got themselves back in this football game, and now they are in control. And 
I think the start of this second half will be pretty interesting. Two things happen well for them. The defense, especially going to the outside and also the switch at quarterback, I think were two things that really helped them out to get some momentum going and some co continuity and some flow to their offense because early on they struggled with that. So as we approach the end of our first half of action, it's time now for a Bob Evans coach's corner. Let's go down to our Mike Todd right now. All right, Randy, thanks a lot. Coach, able to turn things around at the end of that, uh, the end of that first half. What were your takeaways? Well, we came into this game with the, with the, with the uh, idea that we want to cut back on our penalties and, and mistakes, and that obviously didn't take place the first uh, five or six minutes of the game. So, you know, our kids rebounded. We, we gathered ourselves a little bit and uh, started moving the ball. So we're, we're proud of our kids' efforts right now. What's the message to your team at halftime? Well, it's just, hey, look, we've got to erase the penalties. We've got to erase the, the mental mistakes, and we've got to move forward, and, and uh, hopefully things turn out in our favor in the second half. All right, Coach, appreciate your time. Thank you so much, guys. Back up to you. So the 56-year-old mentor of the Rams has to be happy right now. His team up by seven at the break. Stick around for the Music Around Halftime Show. Whitehall 17, Reedy 10. This is week five of Honda's Thursday Night Lights, presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus. Raising Canes is proud to recognize Central Ohio's Scholar Athlete of the Week. Fatima Jello is a member of the Whitehall Yearling High School Soccer Club. She's the team captain and also competes in track and field. Fatima carries a 4.0 GPA and is currently completing college courses at Columbus State. She's a member of the National Honor Society as well as Whitehall's mentorship program. Congratulations to this outstanding Raising Canes Scholar Athlete. You are watching the Music Around Halftime Show on Thursday Night Lights on the CW Columbus Whitehall in command of Bishop Reedy by a score of 17 to 10. Earlier today, I was able to speak to the leader of the Pride of the Silver Knights. We are joined by the band director of the Pride of the Silver Knights at Bishop Reedy. This is Craig Lewis. Craig, we are so happy that you joined us here on Thursday Night Lights. So it's a new world. It's a different time for student athletes and for student musicians. What have you guys been doing so far this school year as far as adapting to the world of COVID? Mike, first of all, let me thank you for having us on again this year. Uh, we were a part last year, and it's uh, really nice to be a part again this year. Um, I want to give a shout-out to the opponent band director and uh, band staff for uh, White, uh, Whitehall Rams. And uh, getting to your question, um, some of the things we've done are just like, you know, like other bands have done, but we work outside. Uh, in fact, the kids hadn't been inside the band room until yesterday when we had some pictures done and had to get changed. But, uh, yeah, we take a little spray paint and distance everything on the marching field, including the marching itself. Okay, so only 12 members in your band, so it's a smaller band with a big sound. What will we be hearing tonight for the halftime show? We, say, we like to say that we're small but mighty, and uh, tonight's halftime show will feature uh, Imagine by John Lennon, of course, and Happy Together, two songs from our piece and our time show. Oh, outstanding. So kind of like Beatles and Turtles. I like that. So no band competitions this year per se, but you're still finding a way for your, mis for your musicians to be competitive. Talk about that. Yeah, we're uh, looking to uh, work with OMEA and uh, again this year and actually go ahead and do a critique that they're offering where they'll look at a video of the band and offer us some, uh, some comments about it. Okay. Now, is there anything else that you've got planned this upcoming year for the marching band? Uh, at this point, they're, they're not allowing me to plan anything, but I have plans uh, that I'd like to see materialize. Um, but in any case, it's going to be a great season regardless, and we're, uh, we're happy to be here. What has really impressed you the most so far this year with, you, with your musicians? What has really stuck out to you? Um, just the fact that they work really hard despite all of it, and they're always careful to make sure they're following protocols. And um, I rarely have any problems with our kids. They're great kids, and they work hard, and they know when they've done a good job. Well, Craig Lewis, we appreciate your hard work with the pride of the Silver Knights. Once again, Craig Lewis, band director at Bishop Reedy. What a great group of young musicians out there, the pride of the Silver Knights, the marching band. Coming up, more of the Music Around Halftime Show. You're watching Thursday Night Lights on the CW Columbus. Raising Canes is proud to recognize Central Ohio Scholar Athlete of the Week. Tyrese Hudson is a member of the Bishop Reedy High School football team. He's earned second team All-Central Catholic League and first team honorable mention. Tyrese carries a 3.65 GPA and is on the Bishop Reedy Honor Roll. He received the most improved and hardest working awards. 
and also volunteers his time at the rec center. Congratulations to this outstanding Raising Cane Scholar-Athlete. And welcome back to the Music Go Round Halftime Show at the break at Fortress Obitz. It is Whitehall Yearling on top of Bishop Reedy, 17 to 10. Glad to have you aboard week number five. Randy Reinhardt alongside Jeff Logan. And Jeff, we saw two different games in that first half. Both kind of schizophrenic at times, but Whitehall lost early, but they won the second game. Well, a lot of defensive plays by Reedy at the beginning of the football game, or they'd be getting blown out in this thing because offensively, Randy, they are really struggling. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here in the first half of this contest as Whitehall leads by seven. First of all, the snap was dropped and knocked around, and then finally, it's Caleb Schaefer recovering it in the end zone for the touchdown, making it 6 nothing, and then the two-point conversion as Parm would keep it and take it in, and just like that, it's 8 nothing. A couple penalties, they were able to get the ball up to about the one-inch line and went ahead for two. So that's where we stood, and then the snap was high over the head of the kicker, and it goes inside the 10-yard line. And Whitehall is thinking, man, the world's against us right now. But Reedy wasn't able to capitalize as that was a safety on the play. It was Davion Henderson helping out there. And then there's that ball that's recovered on the bad snap. And the problem by Parham coming up with the football. And eventually it goes to Whitehall on the play. And then we had the field goal by Jesus Yanez Alcatar of some 35 yards, part of the customary cool plays of the first half. Another negative play, special teams. Here's the block punt. Whitehall coming up with the big play here. That was Davion Henderson with the block again. He seems to be omnipresent here in the first half. So the block and Whitehall trying to take advantage after trailing 10-0. This is Elijah Hughes taking it in from just inside the 10-yard line for the touchdown. Well, the uh, backup quarterback, they've been going with two back there, able to make the big score in the game. And then right after that, Hughes is able to connect with the other starting quarterback. And he takes it into the end zone. Terrific play. 15 yards he takes it in the waning moments of the first half. And that being said, we stand at 17-10 here at the break. And the head coach of the Silver Knights standing by right now with our Mike Todd. All right, thanks a lot, Randy. Joel, early opportunities but struggles late. What did you tell your team? In the uh, opening part of the game, we have to execute at a high level and take care of the football. You know, we do those things, we'll be fine throughout the night. we got to get back on track playing Silver Knight football. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Good thank luck you. here in the second half. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Mike. 17-10, the tally here at the break. So the Silver Knights with some work to do. There's your stats from the first 24 minutes of action. And early on, we saw all negative yards for Whitehall Yearling. Now look at Reedy. They're on the negative side of things. There are 87 yards of penalties in there. Gives you some idea that neither team is executing at a high level. Uh, one turnover by Bishop Reedy. And I'll, I'll share this with you. Whitehall, 38 offensive plays. Reedy, only 16 offensive plays. Negative. 21 rushing, pass yards 10, negative 11 for the uh, entire first half. They've got to get something going, and that's what Coach Cutler was talking about. Well, we've nearly gone the length of the football field in penalties with 87 yards combined for the two teams. 17 to 10. Whitehall up at the break. Plenty of action yet to come in the second half. Join us for that, if you will. That's just around the corner right here on Honda's Thursday Night Lights, presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus. Welcome back to Fortress Obets as we start the second half of week number five. It is Whitehall on top, 17 to 10. Tonight's kickoff is sponsored by Ohio University, your path to success guaranteed. And Jesus Yanez El Cater with the approach, and there's the kick, and the Silver Knights with the option to get the ball to start the second half and starting the return from the two-yard line. And that's Schultz, and he's got nothing there. No blocks to help him out. He returns at some 13 yards. And the hit is made on the play by big number eight, Mikhail and Haley. And it'll be first and 10 Silver Knights about 85 yards away. Let's see what they can do in offense here. When we look at the numbers individually in the first half, the leading rusher was Fitzsimmons. He had five carries for 24 yards. Passing Parham was one of two for 10 yards. And that pass went to Hudson in the first half. So, Jeff, not a whole lot to brag about on offense, and Coach Cutler kind of alluded to that in his interview. They've got to play Silver Knight football to start the second half, and with all that being said, they're only down by one touchdown. On a first and 10 from just past the 15-yard line. And a little gap, and that's a nice little running play. They'll pick up some six or seven yards on the play as they take it right inside, and Therese Hudson, who wore 33 in the past, now wears number one and who was also our scholar athlete, it's a nice gain on first down. Randy, I would expect them to try and simplify things a little bit here at the start of the third quarter for the offense trying to get some positive momentum. And that was a great start on first down. 
Second down and short. They just need a couple to move the sticks now as they readjust that defense. Look at the pressure to the top. Let's see if they send somebody, and they do. And the handoff this time right up the middle. Big hole this time. Look at Hudson go. It's a track meet. Tyrese going to take it down the sidelines, and he will take it all the way for the touchdown, some 77 yards for the score. And just like that, it is a one-point game. Well, yeah. go figure. Negative 11 yards of total offense in the first half of football. And now he rips one right up the middle. Watch the hole open up. One move, one free safety to beat. And as you mentioned, Randy, it's a track meet at this point, and number one is going to get it done. Tyrese Hudson, third rushing touchdown of the, of the season. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Silver Knight football. There's another Ramos roofing touchdown for free estimate on your roof. Text or call 614-761-ROOF. Extra point time now for Evan O'Connell was 6 of 8 on the campaign, and now you have a decision to make because I think you have an encroachment on the defense. Do you want to go for two? Well, if, if it's uh, any evidence of what they did previously in this circumstance, they did go for two, and it looks like the offense is coming back on the field. Yep. Tyrese Hudson checking in. And, of course, Darius Parham. The last time this happened in the first quarter, he took it around the left side from three-quarters of a yard, if you will, for the two-point try. This time Hudson's going to go as a wideout to the top, along with Daniels. And then it is Fitzsimmons in the backfield with Metz on a wing to the top. A lot of room to run left here, and he's going to run right. And he's got the yard and a <laughs> half, and he's got the two-point try. And instead of being down as they were just about 45 seconds ago, just like that, Reedy, apparently they are fast starters. As 46 seconds into the second half, they now take the lead 18-17. Don't go anywhere. This is Honda's Thursday Night Lights presented by Columbus State Community College in one place on the CW Columbus. And welcome back to Fortress Obets, a great facility for high school football or any sporting endeavor for that matter. And Reedy's liking the start of the second half as they get a touchdown and the two-point try to make it 18-17. O'Connell with the honors to boot it. It is a high kind of a pooch kick. Is anybody going to get there? That's a free ball. And the Silver Knights are going to get it. Oh Nobody went goodness. after the football. They all just watched it, maybe assuming it might go out of bounds. And instead, for Reedy, it is Sage Tilly, the defensive back, who comes up with the football. Everybody was frozen in cement. A bunch of Whitehall players there with palms up going, what, what is this? It's a live ball. you got to get on it. Watch the white shirts down here staring at it like the ball has COVID. I'm not going to touch it. You touch it. And look at that. What a huge special teams play for the Silver Knights. Slightly different, but the flavor is that of the first half, is it not? First and 10 for the Silver Knights from the 22-yard line, up by one. Hudson off the right side, powers to within the 17 to the 16-yard line. Joined now by a special guest, the man that was with us at the very beginning of Thursday Night Lights, the commissioner of the Mid-State League, Jim Hayes. And Jim, how are you tonight, sir? I'm doing well, Randy. How are you? We're doing great. We're inside the Scott Schiff and Associates Red Zone. And great times. And this is quite a contest you have for the Mid-State League here tonight. Yes, it has. As you just mentioned, that first half started off uh, all Reedy, and then Whitehall came back, and now the second half is starting off Reedy again. Well, what's starting off? right now with the Mid-State League. I understand there's a new team or two in the league? We've added a new team this year, Miller High School, Hemlock Miller. Uh, we've talked to them a couple years ago. A lot of our schools in the Cardinal Division were playing them as a non-league opponent. They were looking for a new league, and so uh, our Cardinal Division uh, welcomed them into our league, and they started full play this year. Darius Parham takes the ball inside the 10. It'll be first and goal, Silver Knights. Well, that's got to be exciting. You know, we talk about the pressure on the student athletes and the coaches. How about what the commissioner has to go through with rescheduling the teams, what, probably for a third time, huh? <laughs> well, it has its it, it has its ups and downs, but that's okay. I've, I've told the league that's what I feel one of my primary roles is right now, and because I, I can't control whether they're playing or not. That comes down from the governor's orders, the Ohio High School and their local boards of education. And when changes come up, I'll try to get them scheduled. It'll be first down and goal inside the 10. That's Fitzsimmons who takes it off the left side and the scrum breaks out right around the five. So it'll be second down and goal from there. Hey, Jim, uh, football obviously getting a lot of attention tonight because of our yeah. Thursday night lights broadcast here. But uh, other sports in the Mid-State League that are going on right now, they're full go, right? Everything's going on right now. Uh, our golf teams who are just finishing up their seasons with their final tournaments uh, this week. Our soccer's been going full go, volleyball, uh, cross country. We've just got a league meet that'll be in October. 
Uh, but but they're playing. Tennis is in full swing. So everybody's been going out and playing as much as they could. Naturally, we've had to have a few games postponed because of COVID. But uh, we'll try to make those up. Darius Parham fighting for the goal line. Does he break the plane? He does. Touchdown. And just like that, in less than three minutes, there's another Ramos roofing touchdown and add six more to the board in favor of Bishop Reading now as it's 24 to 17. Beginning to wonder if there was a pulse, but they have found the pulse in this offense and they are breathing at a high rate. And look at this. Great effort by Darius Parham, the senior quarterback, takes it into the end zone. His second time in the end zone tonight. The first was on a two-point conversion, but able to break the plane there. Ball came loose, but it didn't matter. And what a change we've seen from Reedy. Evan O'Connell for the 25th point. And the kick is up and good. So, Jim, if you're keeping track, by the way, down on the sidelines, we've had every form of scoring that you can possibly have in this game, and we still have 9.22 left to go in the third quarter. Oh, I know. It, it, it took a long time to play that first half. <laughs> yeah, it did. Well, Jim, I know it's been interesting with the playoffs now, this whole scenario. Have you gotten a read as to whether all your teams or most of the teams are going to participate in the postseason? As far as I know, after last week, all of our league teams are going to participate in the playoffs, and I think it's going to be an interesting scenario. Of course, you just don't know what's going to happen. I had uh, two games have to cancel tomorrow night because of uh, COVID complications, and, and how's that going to extend and affect into the playoffs is going to be uh, a question to be answered across the state. Jim, is it more difficult now than it was 10 years ago. Let's pretend that COVID did not happen right now. As a commissioner, is it more difficult with the expansion of sports and everything seems to be instantaneous with communication? Is it more difficult for you now than it was, say, a decade ago? I'm not finding it that way. I've, I'm fortunate to work with a great group of athletic directors in the Mid-State League. They communicate well with one another. They communicate well with me. And um, I just think we have a great working relationship, and that makes my job pretty easy. Well, Jim, I want to say this as we wrap this up. There was one person that was there at the very beginning when we started doing these games and sold it to the athletic directors of the Mid-State League, and that was you. And for that, we are eternally grateful because of what we are today is in large part what you've done for us in the past, too. So God bless you. Thank you for everything that you do for everybody else and selfishly thank you for what you've done for us well thank you and we appreciate all the support you give high school sports thank right. you jim come all on right. up and give us a hug yeah oh, sure okay <laughs> it's only 72 steps jim hayes the commissioner of the mid-state league joining us now all right jeff let's take a look at the hilliard lawn and garden scoring summary and that was rapid again for the silver knights for their second touchdown in the second half you're whitehall now you know that you can move the ball how shell-shocked are you after the start of the second half which was similar to the start of the first half well we were going to pronounce whitehall dead at the very beginning of this thing, Randy, but uh, look what they did in the remainder of that first half. I don't count them out of this football game. Hughes with a little pop across the middle. Incomplete in and out of the breadbasket of Tamir Mosley Allen, I believe. That was number seven that had a chance to catch that ball. Or was it number three instead? Might have been number three. It could have been Doran Mixon. Zach McAndrew, the middle linebacker, wearing that number 87 right there on the coverage. He picked up the back out of the backfield, the, the wing back. Little Doran behind. Mixon and yeah. a little behind him. Yeah. But again, good coverage by Zach McAndrew. Zach, a young guy who likes video games and math and Boy Scouts, and he is just a junior. And coming here across the 40, up the sidelines, and Biles Walker will take it out of bounds, get whatever he can. And a nice move that time as the Rams have shown the propensity to be able to move the football after the first half of the first quarter, and now they're across midfield. Boy, does this kid make you nervous if you're a defensive football staff when he gets the ball in space? Look at the number of blue jerseys that had an opportunity to make the play, and Biles Walker makes people miss at a high rate. Picks up 22 on the play, a try out of the top. Taylor, the wide is that side. Here's Biles Walker now in motion. They fake the pitch to him. He's open in the flat. They're going to get it to him. Boy, that's a high arcing pass. That was dangerous. Aiello, if he gets there a step sooner, might have a chance for that football. Instead, it is now second down. Clearly the goal is to get the ball to their playmakers out on the perimeter, and there was an attempt there to do exactly that with Teron Biles Walker. Watch the fake here. Pitch. Nope, we're not going to do the jet sweep. And he had to elevate the ball back over top. Good job at the defensive end position. Looked like big number 17, Caleb Schaefer there. Schaefer who recovered the ball in the end zone for the touchdown, forcing that ball high. Again, three to the top, one to the bottom now, and a second down and 10 from the 41 of the Silver Knights. 
Hughes to keep. He's got long strides, too, and even if he gets two strides, he's going to get a couple yards, and that time he churns inside the 37-yard line. Well, they want to do a good job on third down. If you're Reedy, they got to take the momentum and keep it on their side because if Whitehall gets this fast-track offense going again, they can score in a hurry. So third down after the gain of about four. Third down and six now from the 37-yard line. Hughes, quick pop. He's got a blocker to the far side inside the 35, maybe to the 34-yard line as it goes to Tyrese Taylor. Interesting call here, Jeff. You got fourth down and just more than a couple. You're down by eight. Eight minutes left to go in quarter number three. What do you have to do here? Tyrese Taylor a little slow getting up on the play. Again, they're just trying to get the ball out in space. They got a blocker out. Trying to make something happen. Good job on the perimeter. Blocking by Melvin Scott. And Randy, I think they're in four down territory. No yep. question about it. They need two. They have to. Reedy coming on the blitz. I thought they almost left early, and I don't know. Let's see if the scrum pushes him forward. I don't think he got it. I think he picked up one on the play, and I think the Silver Knights will get it back. They're going to turn it over on downs. Big stop by the defense. The top of the defensive formation, though, I almost thought they left a little early for the Silver Knights, and they make the stick, and they get the ball back now. With 7.35 left to go here in quarter number three, and up by eight in this contest. Rewatch or share tonight's game and the entire 2020 season of Honda's Thursday Night Lights by visiting our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash WSYX on your side and look for the 2020 Thursday Night Lights playlist. Already sent some coaches there as well too. They want to watch their game. It's a lot easier than it used to be. So first and ten now for the Silver Knights. They're trying to make it easy here in the second half. They scored two touchdowns and 15 points already. Hudson with the dance in the backfield. The dance normally comes after the game, and there's a reason why, because that time the pressure was there. A couple of guys coming through to make the hit. Among them, number four, Davion Henderson, who's had a good first half defensively in this contest. Yeah, you don't want to get caught doing the foxtrot in the backfield back there. You've got to just sell it, make sure that you just get yourself going north and south because that defense is just going to swarm, and you can see the frustration there of Tyrese Hudson that's, in the slot now. Yeah, that's why he was so effective early here in the second half because he went north to south and found some gaps on that right side. This time there's a gap. It's Fitzsimmons. He's at midfield and brought down inside the 40-yard line. Nice run that time. You saw his burst through the hole. They got the first down. We have one Ram still down on the turf at the 41-yard line, but Fitzsimmons able to get the first down. A really good misdirection in the backfield. A lot of people watching number one going across the formation, and they hand the ball to the big fullback, Brian Fitzsimmons. Five carries in the first half for 24 yards. Able to come up with a big play here. Great blocking by the offensive line, creating the opportunity for the sophomore running back. Fitzsimmons has been good tonight, and again, Randy, his ceiling is very high. She looks seven carries for 56 yards for Brian Fitzsimmons. I think Mosley Allen is the injured ram down at the 41-yard line. We'll take a break as they attend to him. It is 25-17 in favor of Reedy. This is the CW Columbus. Talk about a reversal of fortune for the Silver Knights. Ten yards total offense in the first half, and Jeff, they're well over the century mark in total offense already. We even not played half of the third quarter here in the second half. Yeah, minus 11 to start this football game in the first half. They've had 25 offensive plays, 23 rush plays, and only two passing plays. Samir Mosley Allen, the injured player, came off the field under his own power. And the handoff, and not a whole lot there for... Hudson as he tries to take it around the right side on that first down. And that was a Bepler Insurance first down, by the way. For free quote information, visit BeplerInsurance.com. Thank Mike Todd and the crew for all they do for Bepler Insurance. And let's take a look at it one more time. Again, pretty simple. Run up the middle. Try and get as much blocking up there as you possibly can. Dylan Melrose, number 76, leading the blocking. And uh, Randy, I love the, uh, the interviews you do with the coaches before each of the games, and I love the question you ask them, how balanced do you want to be on offense? And they always say they want to be like 60-40, and then we find out, game like tonight, 95-5. Whatever it takes to win, I think is the <laughs> correct answer. Coming around with the football, that is Hudson. Tyrese has an opening inside the 30, down to the 27, falls forward to the 26, and will move the sticks for the Silver Knights once again. Well, good job by Tyrese Hudson here, using that free arm that he had not holding on to the football to be able to keep his balance 
Watch the left hand go down here. He's able to stiff arm, be able to keep his momentum going. You hear me talk a lot of times about keeping your pads low. That's exactly what we talk about. Don't give those defenders a big target to hit. Keep those pads low, and you've got an opportunity to be able to ex ex extend a play. The man was offered by Southern Miss. He likes law, politics, economics, math, and part of the environmental club. This time it's Parma, the keeper. Darius has a gap inside the 21. Down the hash he goes to the 20-yard line. And he'll pick up all but the two and a half, three yards they need to move the sticks again. Again, a lot of misdirection going on in that backfield. But one of the things that's happening is they're hitting plays quickly, Randy. They're not hesitating back there using slow developing plays. It appears that Coach Joe Cutler has said, we're just going to lay our ears back and get after this defense, and that's exactly what the Silver Knights have done here in the third quarter. Speaking of Coach Cutler, what a great leader. If I had a son that was heading into high school right now, he would be one of my choices to be my head coach for my son. Just a fabulous guy, a great mentor for so many young student athletes. And there's a young man that ready to run the show, and I can see all the plays. Look at that wristband. And that's Fitzsimmons. Pushing and shoving and backing his way inside the 13-yard line, and that's enough for another Silver Knight first down. This is where you have to be very careful if you're the Rams on defense to not let down and also to not let this demoralize you and remember the way you were able to come back in the first half. Yeah, good job of making people miss out here on the perimeter. You can see that Fitzsimmons, who's uh, kind of one of those stocky fullbacks back there, they don't think he's got much in terms of uh, juice that he can give them out on the on the perimeter, but he made people miss out there. So good one-two punch in the backfield. Inside the Scott Schiff and Associates red zone again on a first down 10 from inside the 13-yard line. Metz on the wing, shifts to the bottom. And Fitzsimmons has got it. He's got a gap inside the five and carries defenders all the way inside the three, near the two, and should have enough for another Silver Knight first down. Well, that nose guard, Jeremiah Spencer, we've talked about all night how active he is for the Rams, ends up making the play downfield. Watch 56 in the middle of the screen. He just keeps coming and keeps coming. Don't give up on the play. What a nice motor that young man has. Speaking of 56, Jeremiah Spencer. 56 was a good year, by the way, too. You were born then, right? Reportedly, <laughs> so was I. Out of first and goal from the two. With Metz to the bottom, Fitzsimmons to the left, the Parm in the backfield. Simmons has got it, and that time the defense will stand him up, and there's nothing there. There's a triad of guys waiting for him. See the guy at the bottom of the pile helping to make the hit, and also Henderson came in as well, too. Fitzsimmons is a guy that keeps the legs rolling, young guy likes fishing and English, and that's your view if you're in the secondary right now, trying to protect what's only a couple yards away, and that's the goal line. Now, leading only by eight here, you want to be efficient in the red zone. You don't want to settle for a field goal down here. You want to take this ball into the end zone, second and goal at the four. Schultz way wide to the top. Daniels to the bottom now. And oh. got two guys in motion there. That will cost them five. That's a communication error. And Dead ball. False start. Number 62, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. You know, without huddles a lot of times, signaling plays in the way that uh, football has become now, using the wristbands, Randy, that you were referring to for quarterback Darius Parham, trying to get everybody on the same page is the responsibility of that quarterback, and the communication has to be at a very high level. Daniel stays to the bottom, Schultz to the top. That's Hudson in the slot to the bottom. Mets in the backfield as well, too. Hudson in motion, and it's a keeper by Parham. Looks for the gap, finds the seam to the right, and takes it in for the third touchdown in the third quarter. Once again, a Ramos roofing touchdown, and the Silver Knights add six more to the score. It's 31-17. Boy, what a changeover this offense has become. Again, they haven't done anything fancy. They just come out and played what uh, Coach Cutler said, Silver Knights football. And if you had any question as to what Silver Knights football is supposed to look like, this is the example three quick scores here in the third period. He's happy. I would think all those plays in that wristband weigh him down a little bit. It looked like an encyclopedia. Kids, that used to be a series of books that you used to read to get information and knowledge before there was an internet. Extra point is up and good by O'Connell. And all of a sudden, a team that was down by seven is now up by 15 here in the second half at 32-17 with 2.27 left to go. And Boy, Jeff, if you look up turnaround in that encyclopedia, this is probably what you would see right now with the way they have turned this on. And I want to remind you that coming up at the start of the fourth quarter, we'll join Mike Todd on the custom air heating and cooling sideline for a conversation with Bishop Reedy Assistant Principal 
Matt Brickner, also a great little coach as well, too. And Dr. Brickner, he will join us at halftime. Your Hilliard Lawn and Garden scoring summary and took just over five minutes to score that third touchdown in the quarter, and they went some 68 yards in nine plays. So right now it seems like the Silver Knights are rolling, but yeah, you know, take a look at the Whitehall Ram offense. We felt they were kind of in this position in the first half, Jeff, and all of a sudden they found their elixir and turned it on. They really have, ran in. Again, I don't think you can count Whitehall out of this football game just with the big play capacity that their offense has, but they have got to quit making mistakes. O'Connell with the boot. It is high. It is diagonal, and this time they're going to try to cover it as it's caught on the play by Taylor and Tyrese will get it up to the 20 yard line. Bounce off the defenders, but lose a couple more as he's hit at the 26. To the sidelines we go, and Mike Todd has an injury update. Mike? All right, Randy. Just looked at Tamir Mosley Allen for Whitehall. He went through all the protocols with the training staff, and it does not look likely that he will return to this game tonight. That is a big loss, Jeff, at defensive end. This is a guy with 14 solos, six assists, two tackles for loss, a couple of sacks, a fumble cause, and two fumble recoveries. He's been an anchor and a returning starter on a defense that doesn't have many returning starters. So first and 10 for the Rams from the 28. And you can look at that percentage. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah, 15 of 18. And also done a good job. One of those rushes led to a touchdown. And that one breaks down, though, immediately. And there's nothing there as McGowan just ripped it into the turf back of the 23-yard line. Yeah, J. Juan McGowan plays a defensive end position. I love it that uh, the Silver Knights have got two defensive ends wearing numbers 24 and 26. Now what, were these guys running backs and all of a sudden they started putting them down in a three-point stance? Well, McGowan was a running back, yeah. <laughs> they didn't change numbers to get those traditional defensive end numbers. Jeff, nobody wants to wear a number over 80 anymore. I mean, you look at the Whitehall roster, and there's one guy over 80 and the same thing for Reedy. Hughes with the fake of the pump. Rolls, and he's running out of real estate. Oh, my goodness. Brought down back inside the 15 and stayed in bounds, too. Got to figure out a way to get rid of that football in that circumstance. Again, the pressure coming from Jay Watt and McGowan. Not, not good for Whitehall. Watch the uh, left side of your screen. You can see the pressure. He had an inside move on the left tackle and was able to beat him on the inside. Now, what the risk is, is that that quarterback ends up wheeling back to the left. If your defensive end is taking that inside move, you create opportunities to be able to get outside of that play. But they chose to go right. Coach Lightfoot trying to cheer on his offense. Now the ball back of the 14. They have to get it all the way up to the 37. They dump it out near side. There's some opening there, but the open field tackle negates any opportunity. I think that was Tilly who made the hit, who got flung further from his teammate than he did on the play to make the hit. And Tilly comes up and makes the play. Well, Tilly and Ayello back there in that secondary are very sure tacklers. And this is fundamentally sound. Put your helmet right on his belt buckle and finish. That is a great job by Sage Tilly. And then he got flung by P.J. Daniels at the end of the play. <laughs> Vital stats on Sage so far. Seven solos, one assist. And Jeff mentioned he had an interception. It was good for 25 yards on the return to a guy that played on the JV last year. So the kicking game has been an excursion for both squads. And right now, standing back inside the five-yard line is Jesus Yanez Elcutter. And with that being said, that will end quarter number three. Head to the fourth. It was all Silver Knights in the third. They're up 32-17. Week number five of Honda's Thursday Night Lights presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus. Very happy to be joined by the associate principal at Bishop Reedy High School. This is Matt Brickner. Matt, thank you so much for joining us here on Thursday Night Lights. About four weeks into the school year, it's a, a different world that we're living in now. But what has impressed you the most these first couple of weeks at Bishop Reedy? Yeah, it's a different different start to the school year. Uh, what's impressed me most is the students and the staff, the way that they've responded um, and accepted that responsibility and really taken on you know, what we're asking them to do and following the protocols. They've been great at, at doing all of that. Now, of course, we're here at an athletic event, but you've also got things going on in the theater department where you're trying to 
trying to get things a little bit back to normal, so to speak. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, you know, obviously getting back to athletics is a big part, but the other activities are also important for the kids. We want to do everything we can and be creative and get those opportunities for those students as well. Um, so our theater department has put together what they will do a, a virtual show uh, along with the choir. So they will rehearse uh, either small groups in person and then also virtually using Zoom. And at the end, they will record it. And then our we have a broadcast journalism class and they will take the clips and they will piece it together and edit it. And it will be a virtual musical that the families and you know stakeholders at Bishop Reed will be able to purchase a ticket and watch it online. Um, and so it's just a virtual way. And again, it's something to, to get the kids involved and to keep uh, providing opportunities for them to do things that they enjoy. Oh, that is outstanding. I, I, I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward forward to that. So Matt Brickner, Associate Principal of Bishop Reedy, thank you so much for joining us tonight, guys. Back up to you. Tyrese Hudson stair-stepping his way, Jeff, to the outside, to the sidelines, and it's been a clinic on the ground, especially by Reedy here in the second half, hasn't it? It really has, Randy. In the third period, 180 yards of total offense. They were minus 11 of total offense in the first half of play. They came back with a vengeance. And White Whitehall only with 18 yards of offense in the quarter number three. There you look at the numbers. 11 yards per try for Tyrese Hudson. Good work when you can get it. Not a first and 10 now from the 24-yard line. And they'll keep it on the ground and pick up a yard or two maybe, and that's about it as they hand it off inside. Yeah, bad mesh Guess who that there. was? Yeah, Jawan McGowan. Yeah, getting a chance. Now you know Using why there's that 24, 24 number. See? Yeah. Giving the other big fullback, Brian Fitzsimmons, a little bit of a break. Yeah, that's where we saw McGowan in the pass as well, too. He's added defensive line to his repertoire. And uh, a couple changes now for the Silver Knights. Is coming in to the contest. Hudson comes back in. He's going to go wide to the top along with Daniels. That's us back in there as the up back, kind of like more an H back. And Fitzsimmons is back at the running back to the right of Darius Parham. And Brian's got it. Slides through a little hole. Gets it all the way down to the 15-yard line. Needed to get inside the 15 to get the first down, and he's close. Let's see where they're going to mark his knee down. They're going to mark his knee right at the 15, so he's about a yard shy of the stick. Well, that's just bowling your neck and saying, we're going to come after you. Good lead blocking inside. Great pull by Chance Akers, the right guard, number 62, leading the way. Again, just a sophomore. Randy, the last time Reedy passed the football came on the second play of quarter number two. I don't think we're going to throw it again. We've got a Silver Knight down at the 17-yard line. As they attend to him, we'll take a break right now. 32-17, the tally here on the CW Columbus. Welcome back to Fortress Obets. The injured player off the field now for the Silver Knights in the purse of uh, number 55, Devon Malone. So hopefully he's okay. The 6'2 junior is a starter on both sides, offensive and defensive lines respectively. So he comes over to the sidelines. Hopefully he'll get a chance to come back out there. So the Silver Knights are looking at a third down and one. And don't forget, coming up at the end of the game, Jeff and I will be selecting the rally's player of the game. So that's coming up at the end of the contest. Rally sounds good right about now. A little movement at the line of scrimmage, Randy. It looked like the Silver Knights maybe were not on the same count, right side of the line. Well, the odds of getting a rally's delivery upstairs here. Dead ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. If Rob calls a couple more of those, we'd have enough time. We would have plenty yeah. of time. So that's a big loss there for the Silver Knights. What was third and one is now third and six from back of the 20-yard line. Still inside the Scott Schiff and Associates red zone. Our thanks to Schiff and Associates for the great job. You know, he went to Eastmore High School. He's born in St. Anne's, went to the Ohio State University. I love that commercial. Buy local, stay local. Fitzsimmons has got it off the right side, tries to cut it inside. Not a whole lot there. A guy that met him helmet to helmet right at the line of scrimmage was Tavion Scott, the linebacker, that guy. Yeah, that's a sophomore again, Randy. The youth of these, these two football teams with the number of sophomores that are playing major roles. And again, a, a kid that's a little undersized at 5'10", 150, but a big upside. You can see there, feeling that pain a little bit on the right side of his body, but ready to go again. Field goal time, I like what he likes. He, he likes math and sleeping, not necessarily in that order. Timeout can be taken by the Silver Knights. So they'll burn the timeout, and they'll take that as we've got nine and a half left to go in the fourth quarter. 
early on in this contest, it was Bishop Reedy up 10-0, but Whitehall then went on a surge the last half of the first and all the second quarter, and it's been all Silver Knights in quarter number three as they lead by 15. Don't miss the biggest plays from the biggest high school games in Central Ohio. Join Fox 28's Clay Hall for first scores on Fox 28 Friday at 10.45 p.m., sponsored by Spectrum. Clay does a wonderful job, real professional and Love it when he comes out and joins us before we do our kickoffs from time to time. And, and he will join us tomorrow. He is just hes just a first-class guy and does a wonderful job of reporting. Clay, how about that, huh? Let's see if we get a text from him after that. <laughs> he's a great guy. I did a little feature with him earlier today. It's always great to work with Clay. He goes back, I think, 25 years. And don't forget the football fever coming back on Channel 6 on October the 24th. I understand there's a league that's going to start some play. And I understand the Pac-10 now is going to, or Pac-12, or Pac-2.5, whatever you want to call them. They're going to follow suit as well, too. Field goal of 35 yards. The snap and the kick is up, and it is good and nicely done that time by Evan as he gets three more on the board and add that to the tally for Bishop Reading. You'd see 35-17. you think, okay, five touchdowns, five extra points. Yeah, that's not how they got Not even close. <laughs> no. Not even close, the way that things have gone. Watch from a great shot here in the end zone. Good snap, good hold, great execution. Can't get it more down the line. Nice to see high school kickers be able to deliver like that from 35 yards out. And, Randy, that makes it a three-score game. Yep, and he had some nice field goals against Academy earlier this year of 22 and 39 yards as well, too. So he's done a good job from field goal range. I think he's something like 7 of 9 now. And that tally up to 18. There's your Hilliard Lawn and Garden scoring drive. 5, 20, and 332 of the numbers to remember there. And just like that, the cushion is up to 18. And Evan will do the honors here to kick now. It's interesting, too, because we've got two kickers that handle everything in this contest, the punting and also the kicking off. Tomorrow night, we won't see that. No, exactly. Evan addresses the ball, and it's the high kick, and they're going to make the catch, and coming back across the 35, and dragging in defender that time is Stavion Henderson, who's had a pretty good defensive contest, as we've mentioned. And what's going on? Oh, no. I, I thought we did something legally to try to prevent this from happening. No, you can't. I'm going to call Schiff and Associates. See if they can cut this, this off. This is part of the deal. You're going to see some, heroes. some populars here. These are schools that I think have got a great chance to go deep in the playoff. Pickerington Central, who we'll see next week. Dublin Kaufman uh, with their fine quarterback uh, uh, doing a great job for them. Groveport Madison. Westerville South, I think, has got a terrific football team. Now, last week we had a well-known or not well-known Liberty Union in there, but I'm going with the sales here. Added Westerville South. We'll see how it goes from there, but those are the five best that I can come up with. In the words of Sergeant Schultz, you know nothing, nothing. No, I'm just kidding. This is Hughes. Elijah trying to get what he can and go to the outside, and there's a hanky. There's two hankies tossed across the field, both landing at the 38-yard line. Yeah, they're going to get a, a uh, crackback block of a defenseless player. And again, these are the kind of blocks that would be highlight films the way the game used to be played. And there you go. There's the call. The flag resting at the 38-yard line. So why did Liberty Union get negated from being there? foul. Blind size block on Whitehall. Number six. 15-yard penalty. Second down. Because they ran up the score against Grandview Heights last week, 77 to nothing. Watch the crack back right here. Boom. Now, again, these are the kinds of plays that would be celebrated yeah. a decade ago. But in the safety of the game, these have been removed. And, you know, what the defender has to or the offensive guy has to do is just stand in the way of that, that dude. Just don't launch yourself. You need about 24. They're going to do a little bubble to the short side of the field. Not a whole lot there for Tyrese Taylor. He got back to maybe the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Right, much better tackling by the Silver Knights here in the second half, and you've got to go get these guys at the very beginning. You can't let them get the momentum and create opportunities to make people miss. So, Jeff, will there be a final edition of Logan's Heroes next week? Absolutely. Okay. What's going to happen tomorrow because we have a game tomorrow night? Are you going to repeat these? We're going to give everybody a reminder. Not everybody is listening tonight that's going to be listening tomorrow. Can night. I leave when we do this tomorrow night? You're then? more than welcome All to. Right, thank you very much. Second and a furlong. Hughes with pressure, and he's going to get pinched. It got away from Schaefer, but did not get away from Mets and friends. 
as they got him back at the 26-yard line. He ran all over, and there's a flag at the end of the play. That's a dead ball foul there. And we'll wait and sort this out. Mr. Bachman has been a busy guy. Personal foul, the call on the Silver Knights. Well, that's the loss of composure that you just don't want to see from your football team. And picking up the beanbag and should mark it up to around the... Th Oh, they're going to mark it at the 41-yard line, so the flag must have actually been at the 26. Dead I would ball. think it would be at Personal the 38. Personal foul, late hit. Bishop Reedy, 15-yard penalty. So they're going to mark it at the 41, so the infraction took place at the 26. Triangle to the top, to the bottom, empty backfield for Hughes on his third down play. Third down, they need about six to move the sticks. Straight back, looking. Gunning on the out. Pass incomplete. Was there contact? Yep, there's the flag. Wow. Over the back of Miles Walker. Andy Schultz came up there on the play, and he went right through the receiver, and the timing just a little bit early in the view of the official. Again, Elijah Hughes not stepping into this throw very well, throwing it off his back foot right there, just not being able to deliver it. Good call. Yeah, just... He just went through the the receiver, and just from a timing standpoint, you just got to be a nanosecond shorter. 15-yard penalty, first down. This Bachman has almost had as much time as Randy Bachman when he's with BTO. But Rob and the crew doing a fabulous job here tonight. First and 10 now from the Silver Knights 44. So after needing 24 yards for the first down, they got it on this Bepler Insurance first down. And... <laughs> The flag fest will continue because I think Jawan left early, so Mr. McGowan will be flagged for encroachment. Encroachment. Defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. So this is a good drive going, courtesy of the Hanky. Down to the 39-yard line where it will be first down and five. If just joining us, we can't even begin to recap everything we've seen in this contest. Suffice it to say that Reedy had the upper hand, then Whitehall. Now Reedy is dominating things here in the second half. And Hughes looking for anything he can find. Dancing around. Very elusive with the footwork, but really wound up use, losing one yard after all that running around and scurrying. A lot of exercise back there, but very little progress. Got it back to the line of scrimmage. They were trying to set up the bubble screen at the very top of your screen. They had the three receivers out there dropping one back. They tried to get it out there, but right away they jumped the play, right? the decision by the Silver Knights to recognize that and jump the play, and the quarterback made a good decision to pull it back. And McGowan says, you're going down here. He's got to be close to double digits and tackles in this contest. He's been really good tonight. Second and a half dozen now from back of the 40-yard line. And flares it out to Biles Walker, and Tilly can't get him, so he gets it down inside the 35-yard line near about the 32. This is a guy that's still playing in Teron Biles Walker, a guy that is just 5'5", 135, and really doing a great job against Grandview. Had a 70-yard interception return as well, too, and a guy that, you know, has shown his ability to quarterback. Just the one thing that makes him more elusive, though, is to get him in the open field as a receiver, I think, more than just a quarterback at 5'5". It's kind of difficult to see over the line. On a first down play from at the 32 now. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage. And Hughes has been a lonely guy in that backfield here in the second half. More times than not, it's been an empty backfield. This time he'll keep it. Scored a touchdown of nine yards in that play in the first half. But this time stood up after a gain of about three. Maybe got it inside the 30 to the 29. Jacob Metz in there, the inside linebacker, making the play. Returning starter. Going to be a busy night tonight for Elijah Hughes, the sophomore quarterback. You can see him a little slow getting up there, but... You looked at his numbers. He has been passing at a high rate of completion percentage, and his rushing has been solid. Approaching the halfway mark of quarter number four. Second down, they need seven more from the 29. You look at the size difference in that backfield of Elijah Hughes and standing right beside him is the other quarterback, Teron Biles Walker. Look at the size difference. About nine inches. And Hughes rolling. 
and gunning downfield near the goal line and tipped around and incomplete. Again, two receivers and four defenders back there, Jeff. Incomplete. Yeah, Randy, again, a little bit of confusion in terms of the, the passing tree, the, the routes that you want the receivers to run. Again, maybe this play was broken a little bit and throwing the ball up, hoping his guys can go get it. And that was one of those tip balls that, unfortunately for the defense, usually end up in the hands of an offensive player. They're, they're taught to bat those down, not just to bat the football up into the air because that creates an opportunity for the offense to have a big play. Aiden Aiello jousting with that as a silver knight, trying to knock that ball away. It's now third down and seven. The pump, the tuck, and the loss of the football at the 24-yard line. And Reedy says they have it, and they do. And coming up with the football is somebody with a number in the 80s. It's Zach McAndrew, the only guy over 80 for the Silver Knights, and he's got the football. Ooh, they were trying to get the ball out quickly from the quarterback. who's trying to throw the ball out into the flat. Again, the Silver Knights jumped the pattern. Watch here. This is not just a pump. They were trying to throw the ball. They jumped the pattern. Now your quarterback carrying it like a loaf of bread. you got to put it away. And this is a growing moment for a sophomore quarterback to learn the importance of taking care of the jewelry. On a first down play, they'll zip it up the middle. And that time Tyrese Hudson will pick up the yardage to the 29-yard line. Anybody else you'd throw in heroes there as far as great teams, top five in the area? You know, I put. did you have Dublin Kaufman in there? Dublin Kaufman was in there. Okay. And then I think you've done a good job, actually. Yeah, you know, I think we, Olin Tangy, I think Liberty, we've got an injured player down on the field. You could have an Olin Tangy pull, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quite they, honestly. They, they've, been, they've been pretty good. We've got a ram down on the field right now. We'll take a break. 35-17, the tally here on the CW Columbus. The injured player for the Rams, Tavion Scott, 5'10", 150, and a sophomore coming off the field. There he is along the far side being attended to. We talked to him uh, the series before, hurting a little bit on the right side. It looks like they're working on his back there. Hudson has got it. Speaking of right sides, that's the route he takes and gets it up to around the 40-yard line. That's enough for the Silver Knights to move it again. I would say he just grind it out right now, but that's the reason Reedy has been successful with their ground game here in the second half. Yeah, they simplified things in the second half, Randy. No window dressing here, just Silver Knights football coming right at you. Put the ears back and let it rip. And Tyrese Hudson has been terrific this evening. You know, I talked about... Reedy getting their state championship in 83 and 84. And we have another Whitehall player down. This looks like it could be a cramping situation at the 40-yard line. But I covered Whitehall in the state championship game in 84, losing to the Big Red of Steubenville and Reno Sakach, who is still the head coach at Steubenville and still teaching, quote-unquote, study hall. So there you go. Tomorrow night, get a double dose of Honda's Thursday Night Lights with a special Friday night edition starting at 7 p.m. when the pioneers of Olentangy Orange travel to take on the Jaguars of Hilliard Bradley High School. That should be a lot of fun tomorrow night. And looking forward to that. And, Jeff, you have to put up with me for a consecutive night again. It should be okay. I've, okay. I've kind of gotten used to this, Randy. And, of course, this will be a home game for you. You can walk to the stadium, can't you? Pretty much, yeah, if they let me. Uh, Jeremiah Harrison is the injured player <laughs> that, coming off the that, field. There's that, two of them down. not a good sign no. over there when you got the, the troops. The walking wounded over there laying down. And, and then, Jeff, it's not too early to tease the doubleheader we have next week. Pickerington Central and Reynoldsburg on Thursday, then Friday night to Sales and Hartley. Yeah, great battles there. Four really proud programs. First and 10 now from the 40-yard line for Parham and Company as they try to milk more of that clock as we're down to five minutes left to go. Back judge has the hand in the air. That means there's five seconds left, so that's when they snap it, and they get it all the way up to midfield. And a rumbling move that looked like it would pick up three or four instead will pick up ten and maybe enough for the first down as Hudson's on the carry again. Going to mark him just shy, Randy, about a yard to go for the first down. And pretty simple block and just blocking down. What are the odds of us going through an entire season without a measurement? <laughs> we're heading in that direction. This is game seven. And I asked the crew, they said, oh, no, we're allowed to measure. And I said, we haven't had one yet. Second down and a short one. And again, you just watch the back judge or the play clock. When the arm goes up, the count is at five. Off the left side, there's the first down. 
Hudson needed one, picked up five, we'll move the sticks again, and drain that clock. You know, I mentioned earlier about him dancing in the backfield. That time, just setting up the hole. That was great execution, allowing the blocks to create in front of you. A little bit of a stutter step here, but got himself going north and south with the pads low. Knew he had to get at least a yard or two for the first down. And think of the transition these guys have made, too. Hudson was a wide receiver. He goes in the backfield. For Whitehall, interchangeable parts, it seems like a quarterback and running back as well, too. So especially in the smaller divisions, you'll see that a lot as these guys mature. They'll be given different assignments. And there's pressure that time, and there's nothing there for Hudson as he's whipped down back around midfield as the hit is made on the play by two of the... Rams. Carlos Rico Franks in there because of the injury to Tavion Scott playing that linebacker position. So move the ball back to around the 48-yard line as the clock continues to drain. And there it is, the prized orb, the golden football of Central Ohio that will be presented to the winning team. And we also have to pick our rallies player of the game. Second down and a dozen from back of the 48-yard line. Mike Todd will be there for the honors. Hudson in motion. And it's Fitzsimmons' time, and he's got it inside the 45. Look at this. Oh this is rugby goodness. at its best. This is a young guy that doesn't want to come down. Also, it's a Whitehall defense that's trying to tackle the football as well. That's a way to get your football team excited and get that offensive line pushing the pile. And they love blocking for Brian Fitzsimmons. He's, he's one of them. You know, he's one of the... The dirty dogs down in that offensive line making things happen. Look at the push. Fitzsimmons has been outstanding tonight. Keep, keep going. Malone, Melrose, Dimmel, Akers, and Roof doing the honors, and they threaten now to have a second guy go over the century mark rushing in this contest for the Silver Knights. And again, I will remind you, this team had a minus 11 total offense in the first half of play. First and 10 now from the 36. Nothing inside. Try to work outside. That's what Hudson tries to do before he's brought down on the play by Henderson. And again, look at that clock. It's going to be under two minutes when they snap it again. So with the victory, Reedy will march to three and two on the campaign. And yeah, they lost their opener to Liberty Union seven to six. Then they got a win against Buckeye Valley 20 to six. A win against Academy 33 to seven. And Randy, last week, 18 to 15 against Harvest Prep. Game that I think they felt like they should have won. Coach Smith does a great job with the Warriors out there. Second down play. They need seven more. They'll snap this with about 90 seconds left in the contest. Big gap for Hudson on the right side if he can cut it to the outside. Tyrese is gone. Inside the 10-5 touchdown. Add six more to the board. Another Ramos roofing touchdown, and then it was 41 to 17. That looks like a rallies player of the game all of a sudden. He's had quite a night. Good job by Tyrese Hudson. Again, they're gonna try and tackle the football here, Randy, but you got to do a better job on defense. And how about the pancake block getting downfield? That was pretty impressive and that block came from number 65. I don't see that number on my roster, though. Evan O'Connell to add the 42nd point to the tally for the Silver Knights. A bit of a low snap. There's the kick, plenty of leg, and it is up. And make it 42-17 with 81 ticks left to go in this contest. The numbers on Mr. Hudson, who is looking, you know, for the sweep. He was the Scholar Athlete of the Week, <laughs> and now he's going to get this honor as well, too, probably, Ladies as the player of the game. We haven't made it official yet. No, it's not official. Right. Not official. It's pretty solid. Remember how the first half changed so rapidly, so. <laughs> but anyway, congratulations to Hudson as he takes it in for another tally. And it's now 42-17. By the way, looking at the schedule for next week for the Silver Knights, they will take on Bexley, and for Whitehall, they will take on the aforementioned Harvest Prep in week number six. Jeff, I'm going to ask you, if you had an 0-6 team and you were forced to play a 6-0 team in the first round of the playoffs, would you opt out of that? If, no, I would not opt out. I, I, I think that sends the wrong message to your football team. Um, 
you know, it, the, the possibility of, of getting a, a team that hasn't won a game uh, going into a, a against a really good team is, is real, the way that the things are going right now. It's, it's a realistic situation. But don't quit on your team and tell them we're not going to play. There's a second super hop there. And it's finally scooped up inside the 20-yard line in the play by Scott. And he's got it up to around the 33-yard line. And the Rams will take over an offense with 116 left to go down by 25. So it'll be first and 10, Whitehall Yearling High School. Fans, when it comes to the weather, trust the weather experts. Marshall McPeak and the ABC6 First Warning Weather Experts are on your side, helping you prepare for the best and the worst that Mother Nature has to offer. Catch it tonight on ABC6 News at 11. You, sir, will be home in time to do that. And set up everything for that supernatural party we're going to have at there your you place, go. too. If you're involved, it has to be supernatural. First and 10. For the Rams now from the 33-yard line, Farhash. Might even look like I'm not there. <laughs> Don't make me smile. <laughs> Black line, Black line play game, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, I think it's a 20th taken penalty in this football game. That doesn't include the ones that were not taken. Rob Bachman, Matt Wilson, Josh Bricker, Jeff Gerken, Mark Barker, your officiating crew. Gentlemen, thank you for your help tonight. Oh, and nice you all look good in stripes. They've earned their keep. First and 15. A quick pop. It's Scott. And it's not. And he's down at the 27-yard line. Good play by number 17, who has a touchdown. And that's Caleb Schaefer, who got that touchdown in the first half, and his family sitting right down there to the left of us. They're the closest people to us, and they're about uh, three time zones away. And they're all wearing 17s. Thank you very much. Again, hats off to Steve Adams and everybody at the Village of Opets. They've done a fabulous job with this facility and looking for a little more normalcy so they can add more events. A little underhanded toss there. On the backward pass, and the ball goes up to the 26-yard line with half a minute left to go. And we've got a flag. Personal foul against Whitehall. 15-yard penalty, first down. Signaled first of all against Whitehall, but yeah. I think it's going against... Yeah, it's going against Bishop Briggs. Briggs. Now he's going to clarify it there. Yeah. There we go. Wow. Well, Rob's getting a little tired, too. You know, it's getting late. <laughs> Arms a little tired now. Need to ice that down after a game. Did you ever take an ice bath after a game? Oh, plenty of times. An entire body plenty emerged in ice, really? Usually after every practice. Really? Oh, yeah. Ever experienced hypothermia from that or not? <laughs> no. Okay. It may have stunted my growth. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason. <laughs> I was going to be 6'3". <laughs> <laughs> so is the quarterback out there uh, for Whitehall. Actually, it's Spiles Walker, who's back running the show, who goes the other extreme at 5-5. Five, five. And a third down and one. Speaking of going the other direction, can he? He's trying to reverse his field, and there is nothing there. He's not going to make it. Be brought down near the 40-yard line. And there's four seconds left to go. March the ball back to the 40-yard line, and this should be, barring a flag, the last play of this contest. What a turnaround by the Silver Knights tonight, Randy. Especially and in that third quarter. Really yeah. impressive the way Whitehall came back after being down early in this football game, looking like they were just a hot mess. And they got themselves right back in this game, leading 17-10. to 42-17 the count in this one, and Biles Walker ready to take the snap. Going back, wants to throw it, guns it across the middle. The pass incomplete, and there's zeros on the board, and that will do it. Silver Knights advance to 3-2 and two on the campaign. Whitehall falls to 1-4, and four, and that's the way we end week number five of Thursday games here on Thursday Night Lights. We'll take a break. On the other side, Mike Todd standing by with a happy group of Silver Knights without their horses. All that and more when you come back to the CW Columbus for Honda's Thursday Night Lights presented by Columbus State Community College. Welcome back one final time to Fortress Obets, where Reedy victorious tonight over Whitehall 42-17. Let's head down to the end zone. Mike Todd, the birthday boy, standing by with the Silver Knights. All right, Randy, thanks a lot. Joel, you said at halftime your team needed to get back to playing Silver Knights football. 
What'd you see during that second half? Well, um, I'm proud of the opportunity, and I'm really proud of the senior leadership. They stepped up when we needed it the most. Uh, you know, we didn't end the first half very well, but they stepped it up. They rose to the challenge. They executed better. Quite honestly, we have executed better in all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and kicking, and uh, they sealed the deal tonight. So I'm real proud of the seniors, real proud of this team and how they bounced back through a lot of adversity this whole year. So. Well, Coach, it is our absolute pleasure to present to you and the Silver Knights the Honda Thursday Night Lights Championship Trophy. Thank you. Yeah. Go Knights! Only seniors can touch that, by the way. Yeah, I would think so. I would think so. Great celebration, and congratulations, Coach Cutler. And it's also time now to pick our rallies player of the game. When we take a look at the numbers, I think we have to give it to Tyrese Hudson because of his performance in this contest tonight. He was that catalyst in the second half and did a great job as he was able to make some catches. And remember, this is a guy that used to be wide out, makes the transition to running back. And this was a statement he made early in the second half. He had this bullet run in the beginning of the second half, and it really set the tone for the way things were going to go. And he's the rally's player of the game. And you can see another great score here, or a great run, as he's able to continue to finish after he gets the football. But he'll be one of the first guys to go out there and, and uh, congratulate and thank his offensive line for doing a great job for him tonight creating the opportunity to be the rallies player of the game. Congratulations to Tyrese Hudson. We'll take a look at his numbers from this contest and the team as well, too, because you take a look at Bishop Reedy. Here's the turnaround for them. They turned it around to the tune of 282 positive yards in the second half after being total of a minus 11 yards in offense in the first half. You know, you're, you're going to need to be more balanced. They only threw two passes tonight. They didn't throw any in the second half okay. at all, but they did what they needed to do to win the football game. The Silver with 282 yards of total offense in the second half alone. That's right, folks. They were minus 11 in the first half, and they win this football game 42-17. to 17. And from a penalty standpoint, both teams have a lot to clean up. Oh, there's plenty of coachable moments tonight, guys. You know, with the the, uh, the balls on the ground and the, the uh, you know, the kicking game. My goodness. You know, uh, snaps and block kicks here. Both teams have got a lot of work on special teams, but that is one of the victims of the pandemic, sure. not being able to practice as much as you used to. If you're Rod Lightfoot, what do you tell your Rams right now after this loss? You were up, down, up again, and then down. Well, you remind them the importance of their character when they came back in that game. It would have been easy to quit early in this football game. They didn't do that, and they still have the playoffs to look forward to. Are you free tomorrow night, sir? If I uh, don't get a date offer better than the one you've given me, I'll see you. There, on the west side of Hilliard. There's a supernatural matchup tomorrow night, if you take a look at it. Olin Tangi Orange and Hilliard Bradley from the OCC will have that for you tomorrow night right here on the CW starting at 7 o'clock. On behalf of Dean Marini and the Image Video crew, the managers and operators of Fortress Field and the CW Columbus, we say thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock for a special edition of Honda's Thursday Night Lights when the pioneers of Olin Tangi Orange take on the Jaguars of Hilliard Bradley. Stay tuned for Last Man Standing coming up at 10 o'clock. The last team standing tonight, Bishop Ritty, the Silver Knights, joust their way to victory over the Rams, 42-17. Let's say it together one final time. You've been watching Honda's Thursday Night Lights presented by Columbus State Community College in one place on the CW Columbus.